just bassing out. Rob's doing a great job controlling our wrists. Now Nebraska coach is telling Rob, go neutral. See if you can get a takedown, get a bonus point. Three minutes of riding time. So there's the escape, makes it seven to two. Stewart of Virginia Tech getting a major over there. And he takes a shot on the front headlock. Moves for a shot again, misses front head again. Rob trying to circle around. Twenty-five seconds to go in the match. Frantic pretty much out of it at this point, but Rob still trying desperately to get a takedown, get a major, and get the team an extra bonus point. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Trying to pull Frantic back in right on the edge. Oh, he did. He got it with three seconds left. Wow. That's big for, that's a good effort. That's a good way for a six-year senior to go out. 11 to two, the final score. Major decision for Rob over Frantic. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with more from Kansas City right after this. You're listening to the 24, 2024 NCAA Wrestling Championships. This is Hawkeye Wrestling from Liberty. Hit a deer, call a premier. Premier Automotive in North Liberty is Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Our premier reputation is built on providing superior customer service, accurate estimates, and high quality work. Our experienced staff guarantees your vehicle is restored and back on the road in no time. Premier Automotive in North Liberty. We're online at PremierAutoIowa.com. Drive safely, but if you hit a deer, call Premier. Hawk fans, stop in and visit the newly renovated guest rooms at Hyatt Regency Coralville Hotel and Conference Center located in the heart of Iowa River Landing. Stay within walking distance of Extreme Arena, home of the Iowa Hawkeye volleyball team, as well as great restaurants, shopping, and scenic walking trails along the Iowa River. Hyatt Regency Coralville is also the home of Hawk Talk with Lisa Bluter and Fran McCaffrey this fall. Come together at Hyatt Regency Coralville, where everything you need is right here. Not as huge as the craft beer selection at local craft cellar. Looking for the largest selection of craft beer in the area? You'll find it all at local craft cellar. On top of their massive selection of craft beer, wine, and spirits, local craft cellar also stocks brats, jerky, bacon, and more from Edgewood Locker Meats, Sea Avenue, Northeast, and Cedar Rapids, just north of Boyce and Road, and online at localcraftcellar.com. That's localcraftcellar.com. Hey, Hawkeye fans. This is Monica from Monica. Randy always told Chef Sal and me that family comes first. So I'm here with my son to invite you to stop by before or after your favorite university event. We are proud of our Hawkeye co-workers, including Sal's daughter, Ms. Sarah, and hope you know that if you are headed to Carver or Hancher, our awesome food, full bar, and Monica's family await. We hope to see you soon. And what do you say, Meyer? Go Hawk! On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. AM 800 KXI. Attention Iowa stations City. on the network. On the Our broadcast Heart will begin in 15 minutes from my mark. Talk in and five, podcast. four, three, never three, sounded so good. two, one, mark. That was your 15-minute time check, stations. You wouldn't wear the same clothes every day, so why are you drinking only one kind of beer? Experience the largest area selection of craft beer at local craft cellar. Craft beer, non-alcoholic beverages, snacks, meats, and the hard stuff too. Bourbon, tequila, gin, and more. There really is something for everyone and every occasion at local craft cellar. Stop in today at 7085 C Avenue Northeast in Cedar Rapids, just north of Boyson Road. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, 
Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work, too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Start after these are all done. Recapping so far, Jory Volk, the five seed from Wyoming, finishes seventh. Shaber of Rutgers, the number four seed, finishes in seventh. Ryan Jack, the four seed from North Carolina State, finishes in seventh. Casey Swiderski of Iowa State, the eight seed, finishes seventh. Peyton Robb, the eight seed from Nebraska, knocks off Iowa's Jared Franick, to finish seventh. All of West Virginia, the ninth seed. Overturned the loss from earlier in the tournament. Beats Taylor of Nebraska to finish seventh. 174, Edmund Ruth, the number three seed wins. Seventh seed, Stewart of Virginia Tech wins. And right now we have 97 and heavyweight going on. No score first period between Beard of Lehigh and Little of Little Rock at 197. To one lead for Yaroslav Slavikowski in the second period overtake Yaldi of Campbell at the heavyweight seventh place match. As soon as these are done, they'll take a short break. And reset everything, get ready to do the fifth place bouts where we will not have any Hawkeyes wrestling. We will have Real Woods and Michael Kelly and their both wrestling for third place. Gives Little of Little Rock a 3-1 lead in the second period. So they are going to not hold these. They are going to roll into the fifth place bouts. So you'll have mat number two, Frost of Iowa State against Ragason of Michigan. Mat number for the top two seeds at 149, Parco of Arizona State and Rich Lovett of Nebraska going for fifth. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services to life care, not the profit life plan community serving the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oak Knoll conveniently located near the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. Kinnick Attention Stadium, stations on the Arena, network. Our broadcast Iowa will City. begin in 10 minutes from my mark. Athletics. In 5, 4, to learn 3, more. 2, one Molly's cupcakes. That was your 10-minute time check, three stations. Hours away from women's basketball at Carver Hawkeye Arena. You can proudly get those Molly's cupcakes inside Carver Hawkeye. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by their downtown Iowa City location for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Penn State, 152 and a half. Michigan, 68. Cornell, 67 and a half. Iowa, 67. Don't tell me every bonus point that makes a difference. Iowa State, 61 and a half. Arizona State and Nebraska, 59 and a half. Virginia Tech, 59. Ohio State, 57. Oklahoma State, 55. for Little of Little Rock in the third period. Challenge of some sort on mat number one where Slavik 
Kalkowski leads that one 4-2. to two. Did you see if Hall or Taylor won? Hall did. History. Five years ago is when they started. So it's a two year process for yes. a new program. Yeah. So I guess this is their third year at the NCAA. Well, Iowa State's frost right now is getting beat six to one. Fifth place is getting beat by Ragusin of Michigan. I don't know who we want to win that. We're going for second. We want Iowa State. Iowa State to win. If we just don't want to get beat by Iowa State, we want Michigan to win. Iowa State is right behind us in fifth place. Iowa's fourth. Five and a half point spread between the two of us. Iowa State does have Carr in the finals tonight. I was going to say, they got one finalist and we have one finalist. Carr versus Messenbrink. I don't believe they've ever wrestled before. No. Take down right at the end down there on map four for Lovett over Parco. Parco actually beat Lovett. That was his only loss during the regular season. I think the weekend we were down in Okie State, they went out to Arizona State. Parco won. I guess it's 6-2 lead now on Frost. Let's get ahead of the game on some more commercials. We'll be back with more from Kansas City right after this. We'll listen to the Hawkeye Wrestling from their field. Menards has everything to get your garden ready for spring. Master Force has all of the gardening tools you need, from lawnmowers and leaf blowers to string trimmers and hand tools. Dig deeper this year and master your garden with the Master Force Fiberglass Handle Digging Shovel. It's durable, versatile, and on sale now through March 24th. Head into the Menards Garden Center to get your project started today and find the rest of our great deals on Menards.com. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash corn grows Iowa. While the winter wind blows, scoop up a zero-down, zero-interest deal on Caterpillar Tough Excavation Equipment at Outdoor for Cat. From the mini excavator on up, Cat Next Generation Excavators feature industry-leading tech and safety features. See the latest models in all sizes at Outdoor for Cat. At 0% zero-down and zero hassle, now is the best time to scoop up your new excavator. Win big this winter. Call Outdoor for at 866-DEMO-CAT or visit OutdoorFor.com. That's 866-DEMO-CAT or OutdoorFor.com. Wow, what a huge hit. Well, not as huge as the craft beer selection at local craft cellar. Looking for the largest selection of craft stations beer in the on the network? You'll find it all Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. Craft beer, in wine, five, and spirits, local four, craft cellar also three, stocks brats, jerky, two, bacon, and more from one, Edgewood Locker Mates. Mark. C Avenue, North that was your five minute Rapids, time check stations. And, and online at localcraftcellar.com. That's localcraftcellar.com. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. 
because corn grows on you. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. Got chronic joint pain? Not having success with steroids but trying to avoid surgery? Well, thankfully, there's a better way, and it's now available here from the medical professionals at QC Kinetics. I'm talking about new advanced regenerative medicine treatments that can restore and repair damaged tissue in your bad joints, providing lasting relief with no drugs, no surgery, and no downtime. This is an all-natural way to use highly concentrated healing properties from your own body to give you lasting relief. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in precision regenerative medicine with over 100 clinics across America and literally thousands of satisfied patients. If you've got joint pain due to arthritis, knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, don't just think the old ways of dealing with pain are the only ways. You need to learn more about these new regenerative options that can change your life. Call QC Kinetics now. It's a free consultation with local medical professionals. Call 319-229-5155. That's 319-229-5155. QC Kinetics. 319-229-5155. Amazon's delivery service partner program empowers leaders like you to launch and operate your own delivery business with Amazon support with no logistics experience required. Amazon will help you scale your business. Apply today at Amazon.com slash owner. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, this is Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling, presented by Pioneer. Attention, stations on the network. Match. Our Smith broadcast will begin in two minutes in from my mark. In five, earlier four, this tournament, three, Matt number two, two one thirty-three, Frost one, of Iowa State down mark. twelve. That was your two-minute time check, stations. Of Michigan. Curious to see Frost. Looks like he's going to try to ride and turn Ragason. He's down by seven. Riding time could theoretically be erased, but that's not going to do anything. Boy, you think you'd be able to go feet to back. Easier. You got that's seven points versus say, three or four. Keller and Andoni, 5-5 five, five in the first. Those two are funky guys. I love it. Just got taken down by Parco. Right at the end of the third period. Man, I love it. Had a rough... Attention, stations on the network. Oh, Our broadcast will begin in one here. minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That There's was your one, one on minute time now check, stations. Down to zero, but okay, that's what they're doing the last second. So, Parco, Arizona State wins. Um, we forgot when we were talking about team race and everything. There's another takedown for Ragason. Now, Splate will put in, it looks like, for Keller, but only a two near fall. Um, Ekamendia got beat by Real Woods. However, Lachlan McNeil had it forfeited out of the tournament. So, there's three points right there for Iowa State because Ekamendia wins fifth by a forfeit. So, that puts the Cyclones up to 64 and a half. Backs coming out now, taking on Salazar of Minnesota. On the Hawkeye Sports Five, Network, seven, from Learfield, six. Hawkeye Baseball Ragazzo is all.
Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of Purdue University, it's time for Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Live from Alexander Field in West Lafayette, Indiana, it's game two of the series between the Purdue Boilermakers and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Well, an opportunity for Iowa to even the series today in a chilly and brisk West Lafayette, arguably the coldest temperatures Iowa's faced this season with wind chills in the upper 20s, low 30s today as we get ready for first pitch. After a humbling loss yesterday, expect an inspired performance from the Hawkeyes today in an attempt to force a rubber match against Purdue. Kate Obermuller gets the nod on the mound today, making his sixth start of the season. Purdue will counter with a left-hander of their own, Luke Wagner, a transfer from Georgia. Cold weather conditions will be a factor today. May the tougher team win. It's Iowa and Purdue. The Hawkeyes and Boilermakers live from Alexander Field in West Lafayette with first pitch coming in a bit. Let's welcome in color analyst John Evans. John, a, a bit of a surprising game yesterday. We'll, we'll flush it in this intro segment and then move on to, <laughs> to game two. But uh, w- what a surprise that, that we saw, and, and not in a good way yesterday from the Hawks. No, the, the Purdue history had been take some pitches, make, uh, you know, make pitchers throw strikes, kind of a patient approach. And they actually came out dead opposite of that in the first inning and really uh, jumped on uh, some Brody pitches early and had a couple of, of good hits, a couple of well-positioned good breaks, and, and were able to put three up early. And then, um, boy, took advantage of Iowa not being able to, to respond. You know, had a chance, you know, could get one, but couldn't get the crooked number. And, and uh, then the wheels wheels on the bus kind of kind of got wobbly there in the third inning with a couple of errors and uh, a couple of infield hits and and all heck breaking loose i think it kind of shocked iowa that somebody finally hit brody usually nobody touches brody and and purdue came out early yesterday with the three runs in the first inning by putting the ball in play and i, I think that uh, coach heller talks about it a bit too that that kind of put the hawks on the back foot right away well and, and you know we talked about it during the broadcast yesterday that that Purdue was a team that uh, was going to chirp you and going to get after you if you let them, and and uh, they had reason to chirp right away and kind of let them go. Mike Bolton Jr., the the leadoff hitter, I think he raised his average 33 points yesterday. I think he was 230 something yesterday. He's 267 now, um, and he looked like an All-American the way he knocked the ball around on Brody, and then uh, you know followed that up with with the rest of the Hawkeye pitching staff too. So um, it, it, it'll. I, I've talked to some of the guys, you know, last night at the field here this morning. Um, uh, you know, their 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 personality isn't to uh, chirp back, but but they're going to have to find their own way to respond. You know, it, it's kind of like leadership. You know, you you don't have to be a vocal vocal leader, but uh, you know, you've got to find your leadership style. And and you know, Ohio got punched yesterday, and and. Uh, responded once but when Purdue punched him again there wasn't a, a huge response back and so it's going to be that um, you know how, how do you find your 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 tough personality to come back to it uh, there's always this steady and stoic attitude that that the Hawks have we'll see if they come out a little angry today a controlled anger uh, and, and take it out on Purdue well, you know, and you saw that a little bit when we were in Jacksonville State. You know, the, the tough, the tough loss. Um, you know, on the walk-off home run, and and they said, "Gosh, how do you respond to that?" And, and they responded exceptionally well. Now the problem was then on Sunday they they didn't handle prosperity very well, and so that's that's the key is is really trying to find a consistency that that has plagued this team all year is is a consistent higher level to get to where they want to get to. I would drop the opener 10 to 3 yesterday. Look to get back on track today with game two of the series against Purdue. John talks with reliever Justin Hackett right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Oh, oh, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. (laughs) While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pregame. I'm here with Justin Hackett. Hack, thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. So, I guess I kind of start with the same basic question for everybody. Started at, at well, we'll go back up. Winter set, yeah. TCU, yeah. Iowa. Yeah. What was your uh, what, what was your path, and how did you what did you kind of see in TCU, and then and what did you see in Iowa that made you come back here? Yeah, um, being from Iowa, and then from Winter set, I played four years there at the varsity level, and. I can't be more thankful for the coaches there and that program for what they did um, with me and allowed me to develop and kind of be myself. And um, I, I originally I had my mind made up. I really wanted to go south. Um, and so when I, I had a bunch of wonderful opportunities to go play kind of wherever I wanted in that situation. And I ended up landing on TCU just because I had a good connection with the coaches. And it was an environment in the south that I knew I wanted to try out. And um, didn't end up working out how I wanted it to. And, you know, that's how life is sometimes. You, you go through tough times and, and learn and kind of persevere and, and take steps in the right direction to move forward. And I had a wonderful opportunity open to come back home to Iowa and, and be around a lot of people I know I can continue to develop and be on a championship-type team. And um, super grateful to be here and, and excited to keep moving forward with these guys. Yeah, as we sit here today, yeah. we worry about real feel. Which yeah. I can't imagine why you'd yeah. want to think, yeah, I know. <laughs> at least entertain South <laughs> yeah. a little bit. yeah. Um, so you know, coming out of high school, you yeah. maybe had uh, you had some had higher velo than yeah. you have now. TCU yeah. tried to do yeah. some things that maybe trying to help you yeah. protect yeah. you, but maybe yeah. hasn't worked hasn't worked out all yeah. that way. Yeah, um, it's just more of a, a change, like you said. They wanted to try to um, you know make sure that I stayed healthy and kind of the way I do things a little bit funky and a little bit different than than most. And um, you know they didn't really like that, so I listened, worked my tail off, and ended up. Not working out, which is okay, um, because you know every time uh, I get back out on the field and put my work in, now it's just getting back closer to the best version of myself, and that's all I can be worried about. You know, results and process. Results will come, but if my process stays the same and continuing uh, to get back to who I am as a pitcher and as a person, uh, that's all that matters to me right now. So, one of the things you said to me in, in one of our BPs that, that really resonated was, you know, all of these all of these things that haven't worked out was yeah. just. It's just part of the journey, yeah. and which which is a great attitude. Instead yeah. of hey, everything should work out great. It yeah. should all be it should all be perfect for me. Yeah, I mean, and that's part of life with everything. It's not always going to work out. Majority of the time, it's not going to work out. And I think a huge part of that is being a person of faith and just realizing that um, you know there's going to be ups and downs. And and the period of life that I'm in, kind of the struggles I may be going through, is for a reason. And all will end up better out in the end uh, as long as I continue to put the work in and and have a process oriented kind of vision with everything. So. I'm excited moving forward. 
you played on a team last year that actually went to the College World yeah. Series, and, and you're just telling me, you know, had had 20 some losses. Yeah. I mean, you know, this Iowa season maybe hasn't hasn't directed, uh, hasn't started the way that everybody expected. What was what would be your message, kind of as a as a guy that's that's been on a team that's done that to your teammates? And, hey, keep doing the right things. Yeah, I keep bringing this up to everyone that. I don't know. It hasn't been ideal for us, obviously, this far, but um, it's one of those things last year kind of going through that and kind of seeing the background of it is it's not time to panic right now. Um, you know, we're through the first about third, a little bit over the first third of the season, and it's uh, best to play your best ball in the second half of the season kind of leading up to the tournament and stuff. Obviously, you got to pick up wins to uh, qualify and stuff and look good going into Big Ten play, but um, not near <laughs> the amount of time to panic right now when it comes to kind of the struggles that are going early on. We need to continue to go about things the right way and play the brand of baseball we know how to play, and, and all will work out. I have so much confidence in, in our pitching staff and our position players that we're going to figure it out and be very good uh, as the year comes to a close. All right, so now what uh, what what is what is what is Justin Hackett, the non-baseball player? What, what's what's entertainment value for you? Um, I, I do a lot of video games. I like to go fishing when the weather's nice out, and um, kind of. I don't know, this sounds a little bit silly, but I'm, I'm Justin away from the field, and then when I get on the field and pitching and stuff, I like to be hacked. So I, I'm able to differentiate there, um, and so that's kind of how I go about things, and it helps me kind of uh, separate my passion and just my regular life and being a person. You, uh, you, what, what's major? What, what are you? Oh, yeah, um, I'm an econ major. Um, okay. I, I went, started off as mathematics major. I kind of wanted to go into engineering, but didn't really know which avenue yet. And it proved to be a little bit too like difficult for uh, of a workload for me with my passion with baseball. So basically, switch over to business math with econ, and there's a bunch of different avenues I can go down there. But hopefully, financial management down the road. And um, but yeah, you said your dad was an engineer, yeah, right? Yeah, civil engineer uh, back in Madison County. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a whole different level of math. I yeah. looked at that for a while too. <laughs> those those vectors operate differently. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I better let you get back to the hacky set games. Get, to, get in there. <laughs> Somebody needs to take down Detay. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank Thanks you for joining me, Hack. Justin Hackett, Hawkeye reliever. We'll be right back. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. The burger shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that, too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks. Compare with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva Agriscience. Ah, that's it. I'm going for a pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva Agriscience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game as a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season. Please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. Game two of the series with Purdue from Alexander Field. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, a uh, uh, tough loss yesterday. When when Coach Sutherland came up in the postgame interview, he, d- he just said didn't feel like played Iowa baseball yesterday. No, and we didn't respond very well with how the game started. And, you know, I don't think um, 
I don't think our guys saw Brody getting hit hard in the first inning and them putting a three spot. Um, we came back in the second and we ended up with a runner at third and less than two outs and we didn't get the runner in. And then, uh, you know, so it's 3-0 game. No big deal. We're going to be fine. And then, um, you know, we made a couple of miscues and they continued to, to get good swings off Brody and uh, we have a chance in the fourth to, to get out of the inning and we don't make a tough play and um, you know, they score three more and now we're down 6-1 and uh, that's when I felt like, um, you know, just defeatist type type mentality where it, it, it we went into a, a, a run with six out of seven strikeouts at the end of the fifth through the sixth and seventh. Um, and, and five of those strikeouts were on pitches out of the zone. And we didn't execute our plan offensively. Um, you know, we chased, we chased his change up down. Um, you know, we just, just, we didn't play, like Marty said, we didn't play good baseball. All the things we value in our program and what the program was built on. We weren't very good at those things yesterday. We went back to 16 free bases, four, four errors and, and, and two of the errors, um, you know, um, what, you know, in the outfield and, and, and you know, situations, a you know, pitcher error, um, you know, those things, those things hurt you and they usually cost you runs. And, um, you know, we, 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 we fought back with a couple runs in the eighth. You know, Andy Nelson had a home run. He had a good game. And Gable Mitchell had, you know, four quality at-bats yesterday. And uh, it wasn't without some positives. I mean, um, you know, I thought the guys that, that came in, Hackett did a nice job. You know, Chaz Wheatley got nickel and dimed, you know. It was, a, it was a classic situation of us getting down and then uh, anything that could go against us did. I mean, we we hit some balls hard, didn't get anything to show for it. You know, they had three infield hits that, that, get, that scored runs for them, you know, and it was just a, a bad day. I mean, what else do you say? It wasn't what we expected. Tip your hat to Purdue. They came out ready to play. Just like I said in the pregame show, they're going to play hard. They're going to come after us. Um, you know, Bolton has struggled all season long, and, you know, he looked like Pete Rose yesterday, just yeah. barrel, barrel, barrel. You know, scored four times, five five quality at-bats. And, um, you know, they had, a, they had a good day, and Morales did a good job on the mound of making us uncomfortable. Uh, he was quick pitching, trying to quick pitch the entire game. And, unfortunately, you know, for us, the umpire wasn't handling the situation. He was letting him do it at times, and... Um, you know, that, that fed into, uh, you know, our failures. And uh, it's a new day today. We just got to wipe it clean and, and start over. There ain't anything we can do about yesterday other than learn from it and come out and play better today. Uh, is there is there some type of rivalry or some tense history between these two teams, Coach? It, was, it seemed at times to get a little uh, chippy, especially from, from their side directed towards us. No, that's just how they do it. Okay. I mean, they, that's every team in the league. That's right. how they do it. And, you know, you heard me talk to the team prior that um, they try to take you outside of your game and they try to get you to focus on that stuff. And, um you know, we had talked before that we aren't we aren't going to do that. You know, we're going to just focus on our ourselves, and um, you know, every every team, including ours, has a couple knuckleheads at times. And uh, you know, their their pitcher was continually looking in our dugout, spitting at us, that type of thing to try to to try to to try to take us out of our our game. Uh, and uh, I don't know that he, that he did. I was just disappointed that we didn't fight back harder, you know, and uh, in, a, in a positive way. I mean, like with, with better focus and, uh, you know, better decision making and better at bats. And, uh, you know, we went the other way for about two and a half innings and which which didn't enable us to come back. Is that kind of tricky then, Coach? Because I'm guessing that, that the guys are pretty upset, pretty mad today. But you got to be careful with that. Don't be too mad. It's, yeah, yeah. it's got to be controlled mad, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you got to be a control yourself. And, and, it, and it's the same way every day. And that's what we preach. It, it, you know, when you're what you would call maybe a rah-rah type team, you risk the up and down. Yeah. You know, and, and what we try to do is establish... Uh, a level of energy and focus that is sustainable every single inning of 56 games and it can't deviate from that and when you do that's when you get lulls and in, in, you know, ups and downs and that type of thing but our program has been built on you know consistency and, and 
not worrying about the opponent and just taking care of the things you can control. And we just have to do a better job of that. We have to come out today and, and, and uh, you know, have our best focus and make good swing decisions and all the things that we train and that we pride ourselves in being good at, good defense, uh, you know, all those things need to start happening consistently or, or you're going to see uh, days like yesterday. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show in West Lafayette today. Uh, Kate Obermuller gets the start on the mound. Let's talk about some of the challenges with the weather today with it being so cold for Cade. Um, Kate. You know, I always say um, the pitcher and the catcher are the only two guys that are warm. You know, I mean, it can affect maybe how the ball feels a little bit or that type of thing, but, you know, he's going to be able to be warm in the dugout and then go out and pitch, and he's the one exerting energy, and he's the one it's to me it's awesome to pitch when it's cold okay because hitters hitters hate it you know i mean it hurts their hands if they get jammed um and then we talk about this all the time in our program the key that the key to cold days is your pitcher working quickly and getting off the field it's the 20 30 minute innings where your position players are standing out there freezing to death because there's no protection they don't have sweatshirts on their hands are freezing so if you can if you can get the long inning who, a lot of times whoever has the long inning first is the team that wins in the cold days because uh, boom you think about it you know you've been out there for 35 minutes you're numb your hands are numb and then you got to come in and hit and then boom one two three inning and then you're back out there and it just can spiral so the the hope today is that Kate is super efficient, pounds his own, work quicks, boom, we get in and out, and then we, uh, we we string some longer innings together and keep them out there. That would be the perfect scenario today. Full compliment of the bullpen uh, out there for you today, Coach. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, we, you know, Hackett, um, Chaz, those guys, those guys won't be out. I mean, Volker and Whitlock both got up um, and were close to hot if they weren't hot. Um, to bail out in the innings early in the game and 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 i think they'll still be on the board um but but you know we have a good we have a good situation in the bullpen for sure uh, offensively how do you view things coaching in game two any changes to the lineup or yeah a little bit a little bit of a change uh you know will muffler's been um in the limited time limited at bats he's had he's had great at bats and again yesterday he hit a ball really hard you know had like a seven pitch at bat hits a ball hard uh, in the ninth uh, to center field and uh, against the pitcher we're facing, the, another left-hander, a little bit better velocity than what we saw from Morales, uh, but not the, the gamesmanship, you know, not the quick pitch stuff or the slide step and then lift and all the things that he does to mess your timing up and get in your head. Uh, this guy's more of a traditional uh, left-handed pitcher. He's off to a really good start. He, he was at Georgia last year. Um, came in through the transfer portal. Um, didn't didn't pitch a lot at Georgia, and when he did, he didn't have that great a year. But he's had a super good year starting out here for Purdue. Um, you know they're gonna they're gonna challenge us to to not chase at the bottom of the zone since that's what we did um, a lot yesterday, and so that's gonna be the challenge for our hitters, and that's what we talked about in the scout and what we'll be working out uh, in pregame BP is just making good sound swing decisions at the bottom of the zone. We did a pretty good job yesterday on the edges. We weren't chasing you know outer end, but um, you know we we just didn't lay off the change up, and it's a, it's a chase pitch all the time, and this guy generally throws more breaking balls but he does have a good change up and i think he'll you'll probably see it until we are able to spit on it a lot um anyway that that's the plan with him uh, coach how fe- how close do you feel your team is uh, to being consistent and to and to putting things together well i thought we were there i mean i mean i i, I thought we were there i don't know what the hell happened yesterday to be quite honest with you because um up until it happened, I mean, everything was great. I mean, the work the work was great before the game. The attitude, the energy was positive. I, I just don't think we handled Brody getting hit uh, and then scoring runs early. Um, you know, I think they smacked us in the mouth, and we weren't expecting it, and we just didn't handle it very well. And, and you know, stuff like that happens, and we get a get a fresh start today. And I, I don't I don't think you'll see that again today. I mean, they may do it, but I think you'll see a different response from our team. You, you talk about the blips on the radar sometime, coach. And and yesterday, have that be the blip, not the not the norm. Looking forward to a more inspired yeah, exactly. performance today. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the thing. And like, let's talk about Brody. You know, um, 
probably the first time that's happened to him since he's been here in the first inning like that. But the thing I liked, even though the results uh, ended up not being favorable in our way, it forced him to pitch a different way to get guys out in the second and the third. And, you know, he went to his change up, change mm-hmm. up. You know, he was changing speeds better. Um, you know, in the, in the big picture in Brody's development, I think it was a positive day. It, you know, he, he, he became more of a pitcher yesterday. Um, and, and, you know, the, the fourth inning wasn't great. He had his own uh, things he'd like to do over. But at the end of the day, you know, we get out of that inning if we make a play. And who knows, he's only sitting at 68 pitches at that time. Um, but, but, but I was happy with that side of it where he, he, for the first time since he's been here, had to do things different and had some success doing it that way. And I, and I like that. Positive trend in the right direction for for Brody. Let's uh, let's punch back today and take it to the Boilers. Yeah, that'd be great. Get off to a good start. And um, it, like, but as we talked yesterday, it's going to be a similar day. Uh, it's not too bad with the wind right now, but they're saying as the, as the day as the day moves uh, moves on, it's going to pick up to twenty five to thirty, and it'll be blowing straight in again today. So, um, you know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they drop. You know, we hit some balls hard yesterday and and didn't get rewarded. Hopefully, we'll get some some duck snorts today yeah. to fall for us and and um, we can put some runs on the board. Tougher team wins, coach. Good luck today. All right, thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Alexander Field on the campus of Purdue University, Iowa and Purdue. First pitch coming up in just a moment. We're back after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat. Which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Alexander Field. Game two of the series between Purdue and Iowa coming your way shortly. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Starting lineups being announced on the field down below. We'll take our final pregame ba- break. We're back right after this. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. If you guessed that was the sound of a bag of Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans, you guessed right. Well, kinda. It was really the sound of an innovative team that spent decades perfecting a seed with exclusive genetics and the ultimate agronomic advantage. The sort of breeders who don't rest until they've achieved outstanding performance. Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans. Number one for a reason. Visit pioneer.com slash genetics. Time for today's starting lineup. Had a game two of the series with Purdue. We'll go first with the Iowa Hawkeyes in the batting order for the black and gold as we're about ready for first pitch. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, in his 11th season, Iowa 11 and 10 on the season, 0 and 1 in Big Ten play. Andy Nelson will lead things off, followed by Sam Peterson and Raider Tello. Middle of the order for Iowa today, Kyle Huxdorf. 
The DH is Davis Kopp, and then Reese Moore. Seven, eight, nine, Will Mofler, Michael Seegers, and Gable Mitchell. Pitching today for Purdue, another left-hander for the Boilers. They'll go with Luke Wagner. 4-0 on the season in five starts with a 2.08 ERA, 26 innings, 24 hits, eight runs, just six of those earned, six walks, 25 strikeouts. Opponents hitting him just 245. Hasn't given up a home run on the year. Mm. Based on the conditions, I'm not sure he's going to give up one today, but we'll uh, we'll see how that works out. But, you know, as you mentioned, he's a uh, – uh, left-hander that, that gets it up there. He's going to be uh, a little bit faster version of Morales. You know, the fastball will be right around 90, but he'll throw a throw a, a slider in the upper 70s, and he'll throw that changeup that uh, Hawkeye hitters had a hard time laying off of yesterday. Probably won't play any games with the, the quick pitching or the, the varied delivery home like we saw from Morales yesterday. No, I think we'll see less of that today. I think we'll see more traditional... Um, some more traditional come and get you. He, you know, again, he's a, um, you know, a, a transfer from Georgia, so he's kind of been around the SEC block. And but yeah, it, it's it'll be more of you know a more traditional a traditional look for Iowa. But um, you know, based on the success yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised to see some um, you know getting after it when you're ready and pitching a little quicker. Iowa didn't put a ton of pressure on Purdue yesterday. What are some things that they can do today to to up that part of the part of the game? Well, one of the things that that was in the scouting report yesterday that I don't think we ever really talked about was um, you know to make Morales uncomfortable was to crowd the plate. You know, try to take away that that edge of the of the plate by you know at least presenting a visual that that hey if you miss inside you're going to hit me and that's going to be a free base. And they never really did that. So, you know, again, just we talked about it in the open. You don't have to be you don't have to be finger pointing and spitting at the other dugout to have your response. But you can do those little things that say, hey, we're here. Yeah. And, you know, and we're, I, we, you know, you may want to yell at me to make you uncomfortable, but I, I'm going to I'm going to get a crowd the plate and do some things. And it was funny. Justin Hackett told me a story after. Um, you know, the Purdue hitter yesterday that got a, a hit off a 3-1 pitch on him yesterday was, was cursing him all the way down the line. Mm. And Hackett's response, as the first pitch misses low, Hackett's response was a smile at him. <laughs> he wasn't and, expecting that, was he? And Blake Guerin said it just it irritated that kid to no end that, that he didn't get the response he wanted. And so that's part of it. Yeah. Give them a little gamesmanship back. Andy Nelson leads it off for Iowa today. He's got a 1-1 count. First pitch came in at 102 local time. Nelson takes at the knees for a strike. Current temperature is 40 degrees. It feels like 33. The sun is out. There are a few puffy clouds in the sky. Wind blowing in from center. 1-2 to Nelson is low. Ball two. So we beat the 28 real field. It was close when uh, when we got here. There was some some debate and then it perked up. I didn't even ask you about opening the windows today. <laughs> I don't want them open either. Here comes a 2-2 to Nelson. Outside, ball three. Yeah, I don't love the, uh, I don't love the we sound like we're in a closet mode, but, uh, but I also don't love getting a 20-mile-an-hour wind blowing right in our face here for a I couple hours. I don't think the audience would like chattering of teeth and <laughs> sniffling. 3-2, Nelson grounds it right side through into right field for a base hit, and Andy is on to start the game. Good piece of hitting there. It took a 91-mile-an-hour fastball that was just off the outside corner of the plate. And you know, we talked a lot about you know, going with pitches and being willing to do it and just poked it into right field for a base hit. Here comes Sam Peterson now. Iowa wearing their black tops with the gold numbers and lettering. Block Iowa spelled out in gold across the chest. Gray baseball pants for the Hawks today. Check on Nelson. He's back. To the bag without a dive. The uh, Boilermakers are wearing white uniforms today with black ball caps in the field. Boilers is spelled out in black cursive across the chest at an upward angle. First pitch to Petey. Fouls it back to the screen. Decent crowd on hand today considering the, the temperature. A lot of stocking caps and coats. 
Purdue occupying the third base dugout. Iowa the first base dugout. Peterson takes inside for ball one. More fans over by the Purdue dugout in the sun. Not as much directly below us in the stadium seating in the shade. And a few down the down the right field line behind the Iowa dugout, including a Purdue student section. Yeah, the small student section there just perches right on the edge of the dugout and chirps right at the bench. They look cold. <laughs> See how long they stick around. Here comes the 1-1 to Peterson. Nelson with a good lead at first base. I'll check on him again oh, the third time now. Give him a reason to go home would be kind of the key. Yes. Purdue Pete is in the uh, crowd today. We've got baton twirlers today, too. Yeah. Full compliment bringing out the uh, entire, entire group for Purdue today. Fouled off by Peterson over to the right. Iowa parents sitting over to the right, mostly standing on the large concourse down below us with beverages in hand today. Feet stamping, winter hats on. This is uh, in the sun, trying to stay warm. 1-2 to Petey. Hit in the air, deep to right, carrying well. Get going, baby. It is off the top of the wall. Nelson gets to third. Peterson hits a double. That one was close to getting out of here. Boy, that went 340, and I'm going to tell you, the fence must be 340 and six inches where he hit it because that was up on the wall and missed. And just as I had mentioned earlier, Wagner hasn't given up a home run uh, any other day but today, mm. and, and he has given up one. But as it stands, Hawks with runners on second and third, nobody down. You've got to capitalize on this in a big way. Yes. Raider Tello comes up. Prime opportunity for Raider. Batting 389 on the season. 455 with runners in scoring position. Takes for a strike, low inside corner from Wagner. And what you've seen from the first two Hawkeye hitters is a willingness to take that ball and go to right field. 0-1. Fouled back. Raider just barely got a piece of it. Down on the count, nothing in two. Tello with... Team leading 28 RBIs. He's got two in scoring position with nobody out, just underway in game two against Purdue. 0 2 is grounded foul over to the left. We'll do it again. You know, and just like yesterday, Wagner's given up, you know, just six runs on the year, six earned runs on the year, eight runs in total. So Purdue's probably not used to seeing him get hit early at all. So. Keep piling on, put some doubt in their mind. No balls, two strikes. Lefty on righty matchup, the pitch to Raider. In the dirt, knocked down by Cascanet behind the plate for the Boilers. Yeah, Wagner, in it, actually Wagner in his first start of the year gave up five runs against Stony Brook, has only given up one earned run in his last four starts. Wow. So this is an opportunity to, to say hi to Purdue right now. 1-2. Good discipline from Tello. He takes it low and in. Two balls, two strikes. Kyle Huxdorf moves up a spot in the order. He stands on deck for Iowa. Left fielder Mike Bolton, Jr. playing off the line. Third baseman guarding the line on the infield. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Tello. Foul back. Really good at bat so far for Raider. Finally having a pitch count conversation, John. It feels like <laughs> feels like the Hawks haven't had that had that chat uh, early in games against starting pitching this year. No, I mean early on Iowa did a nice job kind of running through starters and it seems like they've struggled just a little bit in recent weeks. Wagner comes set. Here's a 2-2. Fouled back again by Tello. And right now what Raiders telling telling Wagner is you don't have a pitch to get me out. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're going to have to you're going to have to let me put it in play. Now, you know, as I say that, he may strike out, uh, you know, because Wagner may come up with a good pitch, but you're also going to have an opportunity for Wagner to try to push the boundaries of the zone here. Trust your discipline. Here's the 2-2. Low and out, ball 3. 
That right. was a strange looking pitch. That that was an off speed that started outside and stayed out there, but almost came back in. Full count now for Tello. Runners at second and third, nobody out, just underway at Purdue. Here's the pitch. Called third strike, outside corner. Wow. And Tello is out number one. That was pretty far out there. Man. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the, we talked about the, the rectangle yesterday and where it is, but oh my goodness. Home plate umpire David Buck's strike zone was. Coach Sutherland and Coach Heller give Raider fist bumps coming back into the dugout. Just nothing you can do about that. Right. He's just kind of the guinea pig to start the game. Well, and, you know, I, again, I, the good news is, you know, that's a heck of an at-bat. You know, that was, that was eight, nine, ten pitches in an at-bat. But, boy, that was, that was a very expanded strike zone that punched him out. Corners in for Kyle Huxdorf. The pitch to him. Outside. First two pitches have missed out there. 2-0 and for Kyle. Runners at second and third for Iowa. Top of the first inning. One out. The left-hander Wagner comes set. He's ready. The pitch to Huck. High. Ball three. Home plate umpire flinched there. Do you see that, John? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's... We could be in for an interesting zone oh, today, boy. I think. Counts 3-0. and oh, The pitch from Wagner to Huxdorf. Way outside. Ball four. Davis Kopp will come up for Iowa. He's the DH today. He'll have an opportunity with the bases loaded and one out. After. Quick pitching visit. Mound visit. A little chit-chat on the... On the rubber, it'll bring the entire infield in. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants, and more. Just minutes south of Iowa City. All right. Bases loaded, one out for Davis Cop. Cop bat 667 with the bases loaded. He's a 300 hitter overall. Yeah, he is, he is a double play candidate. That would be the issue. That would be the, the flip side of things. So you could use a little elevation here on the ball or just a good solid single in a gap somewhere. Get the train rolling. Again, you see the shift. We see the shift. Our radio audience does it, but the center fielder is, is in right center field. You know, So they're clearly going to work cop away and, you know, He's going to see change-ups down, which is a ball you're going to just tend to beat right into the ground. So he's going to have to be very selective and disciplined here. Wagner just threw four out of the zone in a row. Do you think Cop has a red light? Yes. First pitch is way inside. Ball one. Five straight. It couldn't find the zone for Wagner. Bases loaded. One out. Trying to get Cade Obermuller some early run support. A lot of room on the left side of the infield for Cop if he could turn on one. 1-0 one -oh pitch. Low and out, ball two. Boy, third baseman Joe Stevens is just glued to the third baseline, too. They, this is uh, a very interesting alignment. Cade Moss were batting. He'd love it. Hit it in that left field corner. 2-0, Cop got his hand started and did not commit to it. It's a strike, two and one. Bit of a high strike, but in the zone. Wagner's ready. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fouled back to the screen, 2-2. Two and two. And now Wagner's battled all the way back. Probably has his full complement of pitches. Okay, can't chase here. You still have to have that discipline. You know, Raider did a good job with it. See if Cop can do the same. Two balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. The pitch to Cop. Ground ball right side through into right center field. Here comes Nelson, waving Petey. He'll score with ease. Two nothing Hawks. Davis Cop, yes. Boy, that's a big, big hit for the Hawks to get going. Opposite field. He just rolled it through the infield. Good solid contact, though. 98 off the bat. Cop keeps his bases loaded. 
average going and runners in scoring position going. And now, again, don't be done. Yeah. Don't, don't settle for two here. You've got another runner at third, less than two out. You've got to keep, keep piling on here. Reese Moore, he'll have an opportunity to continue the inning. 2 nothing Iowa in the first. Runners at the corners and one out. Lefty on lefty matchup. Wagner deals to Moore. Low, ball one. Reese struggled with the strike zone yesterday, chasing a few pitches that were those change-ups that we talked about. Reese is going to see change-up and spin after spin. Yeah, that was clearly their plan yesterday, and, and no reason for Purdue to think it didn't work. Throw it over to first base to keep Cop around the bag. I'm going to give you a hint. He's not a stolen base threat. Not in the slightest. <laughs> Hawksdorf at third base. One out in the inning for Reese Moore. The 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball called a strike on the inside corner. That's a good pitch from Wagner. Yeah, that's a good take from Reese. I mean, there's, there's no real balls right on the, the black on the inside part of the plate. And not a lot he's going to do with that one. Another throw over to first base. Good start for Iowa. Good response to yesterday's result. Three hits in the inning, a walk sprinkled in there. Two runs already on the board. One ball, one strike, one out. Moore's batting 364. Here's the pitch. He squares to bunt, missed it. Boy, Hawks catch a break there. As a catcher, not sure what he was doing, but Huxdorf was halfway, halfway down the line as he was coming hard. It was wasn't obviously a, a suicide squeeze attempt, but he was moving and decided he didn't want to throw it down to third base. Yeah, catcher was looking over at first base for a, the time being. One two to Moore, low and out, ball two. A lot of pitches early for Wagner. He's well up over thirty now. And you heard Coach Heller talk about that. It's cold. And so, you know, you get that and you hang a cro crooked number up you know, and then Purdue's going to roll in and have to bat here eventually. Multiple wins in the inning. Small victories for Iowa so far. The 2-2, ground ball right back to the pitcher. He'll throw it to second for one. This could be double trouble. It is. Mm. Double play, 1-6-3 to end the inning. Two runs come across, though, for Iowa on the two RBI single from Davis Kopp. 2-0 Hawks will go to the bottom of the first right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making health care better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Does your company attire make you feel like you're always fourth and long? It's time for a change. Hand the ball off to Authentic Brand and watch your team transform into MVPs. On game days, our team dresses like champions in Authentic Brand. Ensure that your company's reputation remains untarnished by using nothing but the label specifically designed to display your company's identity. Ask your supplier for Authentic Brand products and see for yourself why it's more than just a label. It's a statement. Two nothing Iowa as we get to the bottom of the first. Purdue will come to the plate with this batting order today. Mike Bolton Jr. to lead it off, followed by Camden Gasser and Luke Gaffney. Connor Caskinet bats fourth. Logan Sutter is the DH. He'll bat fifth. Cooper Cornbloom batting sixth. Seven eight nine. Joe Stevens, Ty Gill, and Keenan Spence in right field. He'll start for Purdue today. Defensively for Iowa, left to right on the infield, Raider Tello, Michael Seegers, Gable Mitchell, and Will Mulfler making his first start of the season at first base. In the outfield, left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, and Andy Nelson. The catcher today is Reese Moore, and the starting pitcher for Iowa, left-hander, Cade Obermuller. One and one in five starts on the season with a 235 ERA, 23 innings, 11 hits allowed, 10 runs, just six of those are earned, 16 walks, 31 strikeouts. In addition to the 16 walks, Cade's also hit nine guys. So 
when Cade's good, he's really good. He's still trying to kind of fine tune it and, and you know, build some consistency and make that, uh, make the quality outings a little longer. And hopefully that's something we can see today. Pitching with the lead, two nothing, three hits in the inning uh, for Iowa. And now this is the other part of the story that Coach Heller was hoping to write, his team was hoping to write today, it'd be a quick, efficient inning, as many as possible from Obermuller. Uh, something that has been a little bit elusive uh, of the pitchers so far this year, but Cade can turn that tide just a touch with a good start today. Ball one to Mike Bolton, who had a career day yesterday. He was on base four times. Scored every time. Left-handed hitter. He's their starting left fielder. Squares to bunt and pulled it back. For ball two, pitch was low and out. Obermuller operating out of the stretch only. No wind-up for Cade. Here's the 2-0. Fouled out of play over to the left. Iowa wearing gold caps in the field today. Black bills and the black block eye on the front panel of their hat. Two balls and a strike to Bolton. A lot of speed. The pitch, outside corner, strike number two. Yeah, 33 first inning pitches for Wagner. So, I mean, again, now if you're Cade, you know, get through this inning. I mean, it starts with obviously the leadoff hitter here, but. Get through clean, get your team back in the dugout. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled in the box. Hawkeyes reacted as though it wasn't off of Bolton in any capacity, but Bolton stayed put. We'll do it again at 2-2. Two two. I don't know whether it hit the bat the second time through or what, uh, what the extra contact was there to call it foul. What do you like here, John? You like the slider or you like the fastball? I like the slider away. Reese is setting up out there. Here comes the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Obermuller sets down Bolton. And Cade, actually. Uh, see there, that's, you know, that's one you don't see a ton. That, that, was the, uh, that was the splitter from Cade. That had some movement and good location. Yeah, really nice pitch from Obermuller to get the first out, keep Bolton off base. This is Camden Gasser now, the starting shortstop. Another left-handed hitter. He's really choked up on the bat. Good bat control. Not sure where that missed, but just a touch outside, apparently. Ball one. If, uh, Raider Tello would like to have a chat about whether that's a strike or not. <laughs> that ball was better than the one that punched Tello mm. out. Next one is oh. further outside, ball two. And actually, I don't know that it was, and it was certainly higher. So, I, yeah, he's the home dugout's asking, home plate umpire's telling him it's away, but oh, man. For that to sweep across the zone, too, with, with Cade's arm slot, 2-0. There it is. There's a strike called, 2-1. Well, and again, based on what we saw in the top of the first inning, those balls are strikes. Gasser batting 420. He'll take strike two from Obermuller. I'd argue he's taking strike four from <laughs> Obermuller. That's, that's just me being yeah. difficult. How about a tried and true strike three right here, John? Obermuller's got the sign, the pitch. Fouled off over to the left. Just threw his hands at it. That's a really good pitch from Cade. He, he tried to nibble the first two pitches with the breaking ball. Didn't get the call. Two fastballs right down the middle. Threw the breaking ball again, and, and Gasser went outside the zone to protect. Cade's ready with the 2-2. Two -two. Here it is. Another foul ball hit over to the left. Good at bat from Gasser. 69 at bats for the Boilermaker hitter. 21 walks, 13 strikeouts. So he, he is a tough, he is a tough out. 2-2. Two -two. Low and in, ball three. Whew. Good spot, great pitch 
from Cade. Now ready with the full count pitch. Obermuller to Gasser. Here it is. Outside, ball four. I thought every one of those pitches were very good. Well, yeah, Cade, based on the strike zone we saw in the first in at the top of the first inning, Cade just got heavily squeezed. Could have struck him out twice. <laughs> Could have struck him out twice. There were there were six strikes in that at bat. Uh, based on the based on the top of the inning. I mean Mm. Yes, that ball is that ball is outside, but that ball is less outside than the one that sent Raider Tello to the dugout. So we'll we'll see how this goes or how this plays out. Luke Gaffney's in the box, first right hander that Obermuller will see. And he deals strike one at the knees. A lot of speed by Gasser as well. He's at first base. Ten stolen bases this season. It's only been thrown out once. He's got a good lead. Cade takes a look at him and throws it over to Mulfler at first base. No balls and a strike. There's one out in the inning. Iowa leads 2-0 in the bottom of the first. Quick throw over to Mulfler this time. Gaffney is the starting first baseman for the Boilers, batting 409 on the season. Nine doubles two triples and three home runs. What did our home plate umpire do there? I'm not sure. He had a quick conversation with the Purdue dugout. Here's the 0-1. Dropped low, 1-1. One one. Gaffney's got an interesting stance in the box. Very closed. He's he's uh, pointing his, his front foot right at Will Mulfler at first base. And his back foot is almost in the back left corner of the box. Obermuller ready with the 1-1. Here it comes. Hit well to right. This is trouble. Nelson's going back, and he ran out of room. We're tied at two. And there was your quick answer to the, we'll see how this plays out, John, on the, on the walk to Gasser. Well, yeah, I mean, I just mean from a strike zone perspective overall, I mean, it, it's perfectly fine if a guy's going to hit a ball. The problem is gave him a free base that they didn't deserve. Uh, but I, I just want to see how the strike zone plays out for how we're going to work both sides of a strike zone here. Well, two to two now in the first. Purdue's got a little bit of life in their dugout. Base is empty and one out. Batter is Connor Kaskinet. Takes ball one high and out. Yeah, that ball went 355, 99 miles an hour off the bat. I guess you can get the ball out to right today. I think you can for now. Hey, you look home, the center field flag, the American flag, well, now it's perked back up, but... It was down there for just a little bit, but it's got kind of blowing back toward us now in to right just a little bit. Two balls, no strikes to Kaskinet. Shift on the Iowa infield over to the left side. It might work out. Hit on the ground to Seegers at short. He'll make the throw over to Mofler for the second out of the inning. The problem right now that you're seeing with Cade is you can't the the one one pitch to it was a one one pitch to Gaffney, but Bolton Gasser, and then Cascanet. Now he's been down two zero, so you, you can't live there. That's not a that's not a good spot. You got to get back to you got to throw strike one, and it needs to be in the first two pitches, if not the first pitch. We'll see how he does with Sutter here. The DH swings at the first pitch, high pop up, shallow center. Mitchell's going back. Seegers is around. Gable made the play for the third out. Mitchell makes the grab in shallow center to end the first. A two-run home run by Luke Gaffney ties this one up. We'll be back for the second right after this. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. 
with no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that, too. Check out a wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. 789 coming to the plate for Iowa in the second. Will Mulfler, Michael Seegers, and Gable Mitchell take on Luke Wagner. Wagner threw 33 pitches in the first, gave up two Iowa runs, but we're tied at two as we get to the second inning. Will Mulfler making his first start of the season. Goes around on the first pitch that he sees. That's strike one. Will inserted into the lineup at first base, batting seventh. Hits one right back to the pitcher. It kicks off his glove high into the air. Mulfler sprinting down the line. He'll make it to first base. So off the end of the bat, Wagner couldn't field it. And Will is on. Hawks catch a break there. My guess is hometown scoring will give that a hit. So give Will a 65-mile-an-hour fastball back at the pitcher. You bet. For a base hit. Mulfler singled to the pitcher is how it scored. (laughs) And Will will take that. We'll take any base runner that the Hawks can get right now. I'll bring up Michael Seegers. Michael is batting 265, still trying to get some momentum going. Michael's a good hitter. It's in there. He's a a different type of hitter, though. He's not going to crank out the extra base hits, but... Wouldn't surprise me to see a bunt here. He squares, pulled it back, and it's downstairs, ball one. Michael's a disciplined hitter. He does the the little things really well, and we're 21 games into the season, and Michael's still trying to hit his stride. Corner playing in at third base. That's Stevens. Seager squares to bunt. Here's the 1-0. Oh, he pulled it back. He swings at it, and it's a foul ball in the box. Well, and that's one of those plays, too. You, you square to bunt early, show bunt early, and if, if where you want to bunt it is crashing at you, as in that case Stevens was crashing down the third baseline, you pull it back and rip it at him. And that's what ex- exactly what the, how the play developed. Michael just didn't get much on it and hit it foul. Counts one and one. Throw over to first base. What do you think happens now? Do they go back to the bunt? Perhaps. I'm still more. Davis Kopp and Will Mulfleur have probably had more pickoff moves on them in this game than they might have had in the last couple of years combined. <laughs> and they're not more than a step and a half, two steps off the bag. Yeah, there's no stress in them getting back to the base. 1-1, one, one, Seeger squares to bunt, puts it down the first baseline. The catcher comes, picks it up, throws it to first base for the out. Mulfleur gets to second base. Good sacrifice bunt by Seegers there. Yeah, that was an outstanding bunt. And Made the play difficult for uh, Cascanet, too, because the ball was just on the line. Michael was running on the very inside of the running lane, so Cascanet had to clear himself a little bit and give himself room to throw it first. This is Gable Mitchell coming to the plate now. He's the nine hitter for Iowa. He'll bat from the right side, traditionally a, a switch hitter. He'll square to bunt. He offered at it, missed it, strike one. Yeah, he just kind of jabbed at a at a off-speed pitch outside there. Mitchell is batting 310, 22 hits and 71 at bats. He's drawn 18 walks. 0-1 pitch, fouled back to the screen. Nothing in two. Gable's been a pleasant surprise offensively. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there, and there, there's a little bit of power there. Um, you know, not necessarily home run power, but there's gap power, and and he's done a nice job, uh, really positioning balls well from both sides of the plate. And I, I would have loved to have seen that first bunt attempt to you know, push it past a left-handed pitcher. He had a chance. O2. Ground ball right side to the second baseman. He drops to a knee to pick it up. Gill will throw to first base to get Mitchell. Mulfler moves up to third. That'll bring up Andy Nelson with two outs and a runner in scoring position. Andy, a 263 hitter with runners in scoring position. Does a nice job with two outs, batting 316. He singled and scored his first time up. 2-2 ball game in the second. First pitch to Andy. Takes it outside for a ball. Yeah, Hawks have done a good job moving the runner up 90 feet at a time. Now you need to, now you need to finish it off with two outs. 1-0 delivery from Wagner is inside ball two. See a lot of room in right center field now for Nelson with the center fielder playing straight up. Right fielder a little bit closer to the line. Here comes the 2-0. That's low, ball three. All right, fair enough. We're going to squeeze on both sides. <laughs> Might have caught a portion of the zone there, huh, John? It was uh, bottom edge, probably touching it. but 3-0 is high and out, ball four. Nelson draws the four-pitch walk, and that'll – present an opportunity to Sam Peterson, bring home some runs. Nelson continues to do a good job in the leadoff spot, John. He really has, you know, since he's been inserted there. And again, he's got power, he's, he's shown discipline, he's shown short game. Now, I just, I just have a feeling Petey's swinging at first pitch here, so I hope it's in a spot he likes it. Runners at the corners and two outs. Iowa trying to break the tie. Petey hits it on the ground left side, past the diving third baseman. Stevens couldn't come up with it. Mulfler scores, and Nelson gets to third. Sam Peterson pumps up the dugout as well, and the Hawks have the lead 3-2. to two. That was not a super well-hit ball, but somehow snuck under Stevens' glove there. As I thought he had it, and he was going to come up with a diving play. And heads-up base running there from, from Nelson, too, recognizing where Bolton Jr. was playing. They had a long run. Nelson was able to go from first to third on a ball to really short left field. That's a good point. Visually, John, we're watching the ball on the ground, and you had to wait for it to get into the outfield to see it on the other side of the third baseman. Otherwise, who knows what kind of uh, play he might have made. 3-2 Hawks in the second. Peterson continues his tear. First pitch to Raider Tello. Mm, he really wanted to swing at it, but he didn't strike one. No, and that was the changeup. So rather rather him wait for a pitch he wants than chase a changeup that's it's still in the zone, but not his pitch. Hits this high and deep down the line and right, but that's fouling out of play, and Raider's down on the count 0-2. Raider probably feels like he was robbed in his first at bat, and he's quickly down 0-2 here. Oh, and he was correct in that. <laughs> if he feels that way, he was correct. Yeah. But now he's going to have to battle back because he's down 0-2. Five hits for Iowa already. We're in the second. Here's the 0-2. Ground ball right side. Second baseman's got it. Oh, he juggled it, bobbled it. Did they tag him out? Oh, they said yes. They got Peterson at second base as he was right near the bag and tagged him before Petey got to the bag. One run comes across for Iowa on the RBI single from Sam Peterson. It's 3-2 Iowa. We're back for the second, for the bottom of the second, right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. The silly moments. The proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. 
Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. See complete rules and details at IALottery.com slash VIP. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton. Each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. We've played an inning and a half. We've had runs in all of them to this point. How about a zero? This would be a great time for a zero. And you need to stop sneezing. Yeah. Allergic to something in here, John. We might have to open a window. (laughs) (laughs) Cooper Kornblum comes up first for Purdue. He's batting in the sixth spot today. Obermuller deals. Backdoor breaking ball. It stayed outside for ball one. I need Cade to, again, talked about it last day. You need strike one a little bit more often or a little bit quicker. There's strike one at the knees. Low outside corner, one and one. Kornblum, a right-handed hitter for Purdue. Just a touch outside from Cade there. Ball two. 3-2 3-2 Iowa in the bottom of the second. Obermuller comes set from the belt. The pitch hit foul over to the right. Cade in an opportunity to get a strikeout. He's got one today. And Raider has been the outlier to this point. The the umpire, really, the ball has to be in the strike zone, not edging it, in it. Cade guided that one, missed high and out, ball three. Yeah, you could see he just tried to, he was just trying to do something a little bit different there, uh, whether that was the, that was the splitter again, and just kind of maybe stuck in his hand a little bit. Looking for that first out of the inning. Here comes the full count pitch. Called third strike at the knees. Obermuller got him. It's an outstanding pitch there right at the bottom of the zone. Again, probably three quarters of the ball in, but just a well, well-placed well fastball to get the first out. A huge first out of the inning just to set the tone. Keep the leadoff guy off base. And then in the meantime, build your confidence by getting a strikeout in a, in a gritty at bat. Here's Joe Stevens, third baseman for Purdue, right-handed hitter. Cade's ready. First pitch to Stevens. Low, ball one. We're going to start keeping track, aren't we, John? Well, yeah, unfortunately, I kind of know it's a big number right now. (laughs) Looking for the first pitch strike. Try again with the next batter. Here's the 1-0. Ooh, up and in, ball two. And the funny part is none of his pitches have been bad. Purdue just hasn't offered at any of them. You know, so, so you wonder if that's part of their game plan right now coming into the box. Well, you're going to make a guy that, that has some control issue throw strikes. Mm-hmm. And so you know, maybe you thought that yesterday with Brody. They didn't do it. They've gone back to that today. 2-0 from Obermuller. Lined foul over to the right. Yeah, Yesterday they were swinging at the first pitch, which I think surprised everybody. And today is a different story. And, and they're, they're funny enough, they're – Free and willing swingers on 2-0. That ball's outside, and yet he swings at it and, and you know, tries to line it down the line. So it, it's a game plan issue. It's not even a, a, a I see it issue. 2-1 stayed outside from Obermuller. Ball three. Stevens, 323 hitter. He's only drawn nine walks, though. He struck out 15 times. Cade trying to throw a strike. Here comes the 3-1. Line drive, base hit in between Seegers and Tello. And a one-out single for Stevens. Can live with that, make him earn it. But at the same time, a 3-1 count, advantage to the hitter. Right, you made him earn it, but, but you put yourself in that, in that position by, 
by being down 2-0, by being down 3-1. And you see Coach McGrath um, out for a quick chat here with, with Cade. Maybe maybe he sees something. Maybe it's something with with the game here. You know, Cade has had some issue when um, teams flash bunt at him. Yeah. Um, you know, it could, where could be a combination of all those things. Yeah. And, and it's just, hey, it's okay. But, uh, you know, my guess is you – know, and. and Again, their stat cast for Purdue doesn't show the counts like ours does at home. But, you know, of seven batters, I- I'm guessing there's, there's six. There's six first pitch balls. I think, mm. you got, I think you got an 0-0 pitch where you got a pop out. He, he threw a strike and he got a pop out. But otherwise, I think he's, he's missed the zone on, on all of his first pitches. And, uh, That's one of the keys that the pitching staff typically talks about. Get ahead, get, uh, get the advantage on your side. Right. I mean, you turn you turn 400 hitters into, you know, into 200 hitters when you throw strike one or when you're ahead, you know, when you're ahead one, two. But, you know, you turn 200 hitters into 400 hitters when when you're down 2-0 and they can look for a pitch in a location. Runner at first base and one out for Ty Gill, starting second baseman. Bats from the left side. Obermuller deals strike one. There it is. A little bit of a shift on the infield for Iowa. Seegers playing almost directly behind the bag at second. Just to the left of it. 1-1, waved at and missed. Gill really swung hard at it. And he opened up and pulled super hard. <laughs> well, it's because it was a fastball inside. And when he had, he had decided he was going to swing, and all of a sudden it was like, i got to move a little bit. <laughs> this might hurt. No balls, two strikes. With one out, the pitch from Obermuller. Outside, ball one. But you, know, you get that. Because you're ahead 0-1, you get a slight expansion of the strike zone, and you get to 0-2. Now, went too far outside there. Now get back. Now if he throws that pitch that's on the edge of the zone that he's been starting with, now he might probably gets the swing and a miss out. We'll see what he does. Here's the 1-2. Breaking ball stayed up. Maybe a touch in. Wow, that's a great pitch from Obermuller. Well, and I don't know if you saw what Gill did there. Gill basically just tried to chicken wing that. He stuck his elbow down in, and he wasn't looking to swing, and if he got punched out, he was going to get punched out. But he was, trying to, mm. he was trying to get a hit by pitch there. Obermuller looking for the strikeout. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Low oh. and out. Oh, jeez. Two pitches in a row that – are very close. They're great pitches from Cade. And Gill doesn't have any interest in bringing the bat off his shoulder. Now the count's full. Well, and that, again, that is just a, mm. a squeezed small strike zone right now on a, on a low and outside pitch that's in both of them. Try and move over to first base. Cade's done an incredible job. Getting back on the rubber and throwing the next pitch. He's had two back-to-back pitches that have been gorgeous. Belt high fastball here. Just set him down. Full count. Here it is. Outside, ball four. That's that breaking ball up and in. That was the that was the winner. That was the winner, I think. Well, it really was. And again, you had a guy that that rather than chase it was was trying to get hit by a pitch. So he doesn't chase that one. But the fastball low and away. <laughs> again, it, it's we, we've got a really small strike zone on most of the at bats today, and it's just going to be tough for pitchers. They're going to have to come over the plate. Bottom of the order, Keenan Spence. He did not play yesterday. 268 batter, 56 at bats. 20 strikeouts. Right-handed hitter. Obermuller's 1-0 pitch. Hit well to left. Peterson running back, still going, still going. Sam is there at the wall to make the catch and quickly gets the ball in for out number two. Whoa, that was close. Spence gave it a ride. Well, that is uh, that is thank you, Wind, because um, that ball was 107 off the bat. Yeah, I mean, he just demolished it, uh, but doesn't get far enough because the wind knocks it down right in front of the wall. 3-2 Iowa in the second. Two outs, top of the order for Mike Bolton. Cade struck him out in the first. 
Obermuller deals. Ground ball right back to Katie. He knocks it down with his bare hand. Underhand, toss to first base. Got him at first. Good job by Obermuller. Knocked it down and then made the long underhand flat toss over to first base from the mound to get the speedy Bolton and hold the Boilermakers off the scoreboard in the second. 3-2 Iowa. We're back for the third right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Middle of the order coming to the plate for Iowa. Kyle Huxdorf, Davis Kopp, and Reese Moore in the top of the third. Three to two, Iowa. Five hits on the board for the Hawks already. They'll see Luke Wagner again. He's thrown 50 pitches through two innings. See if we can start to get closer to knocking him out of the game, put up another big inning. Probably not going to teach uh, pitchers to field the ball the way that Cade did there to finish the inning, but cold enough or maybe he can't feel his hand yeah. i don't know <laughs> huck takes high and out ball one don't know if you want to keep testing the i can't feel my pitching hand theory of how long <laughs> that's going to work for you but then i did like too how he went with the underhand even though it was a long ways away it was a controlled throw did a good job getting it over there no panic right that, i mean that's that's again a, another one of those steps for kate in maturity is to not panic through that play and obviously Bolton, the speedy runner if that ball gets past him he's probably beating it out He's been incredibly steady today. 2-0 to Huxdorf. He swings at it, drives it to center. Kornblum is back, and he's got it in the right center alley for the first out. Yeah, and that's another ball, 107 off the bat. Um, but any ball elevated at that type of an angle, I don't care how hard you hit it, isn't, isn't really going anywhere, mm -hmm. especially to the center. You know, the, the center field area. Spence had a chance pulling it more to, more to one of the left field or right field. but That'll bring up Davis Kopp with the bases empty and one out. Kopp singled in a couple of runs in the first. Takes outside for ball one. Nice ballpark here for Purdue. Large concourse area below us. A brick theme everywhere at Purdue. A brick theme everywhere. Yes. Ball two to Davis. Got some soccer going on over uh, well over the right field wall there on the actual soccer field. Is that Folk Field? Mm-hmm. Two and O's oh account to Cop. Pops it up right side, fouling out of play. Two and one. Big black batter's eye out in center field. A lot of room and foul ground pretty much everywhere except when you get to the corners. Upstairs, three and one to Davis. And by the corners, I mean way down by the foul poles. Still a lot of room until you get to that point in front of the dugouts and especially behind home plate. Three balls, one strike. The pitch to cop. Line drive into center. Can it get down? Here's Kornblum sprinting forward. He dives. He makes the catch for out number two. Yeah, that ball wasn't hard hit, and it just hung up in the air forever. It kind of floated out there with the wind and was enough for Kornblum to come in and make a play. Davis hit it too hard, didn't he? Hey, well, yeah, I mean, it was only 83 off the bat, so it wasn't even, uh, I think if he'd have hit it harder, it would have either sunk more or given Not him warranted a dive? Yeah, not warranted a dive, perhaps. Reese Moore swings at the first pitch, hits it right to the second baseman. 
He'll be thrown out at first base and a 1-2-3 inning for the Hawks in the third. Bottom of half of the inning coming up. Iowa leads at 3-2. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! I'm Ingrid Lizarraga, breast surgeon at the University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center, the state's only NCI-designated cancer center. Here, we look beyond just the type of cancer you have to discover the molecular details of the disease. We have teams dedicated to each cancer type with treatments and trials you won't find anywhere else in Iowa. Go to uihc.org cancer. John Evans and John Leo at Alexander Field on the campus of Purdue University. Bottom of the third, Iowa leads at 3-2. to two. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Obermuller will face off against Camden Gasser, Luke Gaffney, and Connor Kaskinet. So 2-3-4 coming to the plate for the Boilers after Iowa went down quietly in the top half of the inning. Yeah, now you need Cade. You need Cade to answer that. Yes. You need him to have his own relatively quick, relatively easy inning. He got his he got his zero, but it, it still took some still took some work. Corners in for Iowa defensively. Mulfler at first, Tello at third against the speedy gasser. First pitch from Obermuller is high for a ball. Yeah, Wagner threw nine pitches in the top half of the inning. Cade sits at 42 through two. Count is 1-0. and oh. Obermuller deals a strike. Yeah, Gasser, a guy, again, a good long at bat in the first inning, ended up drawing the walk, so you're going to have to find a way to get him out. Almost hit him, stayed inside, two and one. Cade's allowed two hits today, a couple of walks. Here's a blooper to the left side. It's Tello at third, comes together with Seegers, and Raider makes the play. And that's uh, it's Seegers' ball. And so, you know, we talk about that, you know, having to have had one of those collisions earlier in the year. Got to have trust in the, uh, the priority system. And, but it was such a weirdly hit ball, too. I don't really blame Raider for, for staying on it and tracking it, too, because Michael's first step was actually backwards and had to kind of come back in then to make the play. With one out in the inning, that'll bring up Luke Gaffney, oh, who takes a ball to start the at-bat. I'm going to stop being surprised by those. Just a touch low and in. Gaffney homered in the first to tie the game at the time at two. 1-0 pitch from Obermuller. Strike one. Similar spot, maybe a bit more over the plate. It was. It, it, the first pitch was the first pitch was inside part of the plate and maybe right at the bottom side of his knee. Mm. That one was more in the middle of the plate and at his knee. That one goes back outside and misses the below the knee. Cade's tried to bring everything in the back door against Gaffney. Yeah, lots of off-speed stuff here so far. Two balls and a strike to the Purdue first baseman. Outside again, ball three. Yeah, the scouting reports he's super aggressive against fastballs. So they're kind of trying to avoid that a little bit. 
Throws one and missed inside there. Ball four. Didn't really stand a chance of that at bat. No, when you when you don't get the first call, I mean, but again, you got plenty of pitches to execute after that, and he just he didn't do it. So uh, you can you can argue you can argue strike one if you want, but but at some point you just gotta you gotta you gotta adjust and go get the outs. The catcher Connor Cascanet is in the box now. Takes strike one from Cade on a sharp fastball, low inside corner. With the Hawkeye shift in place here, you know, he got the ground out early. It'll be, it's an interesting and difficult way to turn two. Based on the angle to second base. We'll have a look at it here. Seegers, he's got it. He'll throw to second for one on to first double play. You called it, John. Well, and it was a great job from Gable Mitchell as, as the ball wasn't sharply hit, so he had time to kind of get into a position that he was comfortable with. Seegers is able to deliver him a good ball, and the Hawks get out of the inning. One, two, three. Purdue goes down in the third. We'll go to the fourth right after this. Iowa three, Purdue two. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM College Sports Radio Channel 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. To cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. That felt like a big inning for Iowa in the, in the bottom of the third there to get that double play and and uh, set Purdue down 1-2-3 to see if it carries over some momentum to the offense. Well, and they had, you know, they had come off their nine-pitch inning, so you kind of had to find your response of how do you how do you get back. Kate had an 11-pitch inning. You know, there was the walk, but it got erased. Mofler takes strike one to start the fourth. And I, I like that. I mean, you, you just, you need to, you, you had a guy on the ropes in Wagner, you know, 50 pitches through two innings, and, and you really gave him a breather with a nine-pitch inning, swinging at a couple first pitches, a couple 2-0 pitches. Mofler pops this 1-1 pitch into the air. Center field. And it's caught for the first out. I'm right there with you, John. Take a pitch or two. You know, he hasn't had overwhelming stuff that you haven't been able to kind of see and make an adjustment to. So you've, you've got a chance, even if you take the, take the first pitch strike. Left-hander deals to Seegers downstairs for ball one. Any thoughts on a bunt for hit here, John? Uh, they seem to think so. Michael takes strike one, one and one. Third baseman playing maybe a step or two in front of the bag at third. But their prep steps are very aggressively forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First baseman's back, but he comes hustling in. Michael lines it over a leaping second baseman into right field for a base hit. One out single for Seegers, and now the bunt could be on with Mitchell. Maybe. Uh, with one out, you know, do you really, I mean, I know you've got the top of the order coming up, so do you want to move him with, with two outs, or 
you know, what type of game here do you want to play? You know, bunt to the first base side isn't a bad idea. With a, especially against the lefty, right? Right. You've got a lefty that's going to fall off the other way. It's a little bit more difficult throw. Second baseman's now shifting a little bit and moving his direction. Mitchell grounded out to second in the second. First pitch to Gable is a oh. strike on the outside corner. Whoa. Kate Obermuller's thrown 15 less pitches if he gets that call. That's that's definitely outside that time, one and one. <laughs> <laughs> no question about that one. Well, I mean, you ask, or I said earlier, and you kind of ask the clarification of that. I mean, if... If that's the zone needs to be the same place for both teams. One one Mitchell takes inside ball two. I'm going to hope their track man's just screwed up <laughs> at this point. I'm starting to think it might be <laughs> two balls and a strike to Mitchell to throw it over to first base. They're engineers, uh, though. How could they how could they mess up the where, where they how the track man's <laughs> position how do you see Iowa up standing in the box? I don't have the best angle at it. Are we on the plate like we'd hoped today? Catcher's right in the line for me, so I can't ah, see. Ah, Seeger's in a pickle between first and second. He's thrown out at second base. Pickoff move got him. Well, you have to think something was on then for the Hawks, right? Yeah, he because his knees buckled as soon as he as soon as he recognized that. Uh, uh, that Wagner was going to first his knees buckled and so I think he was he was probably moving but then realized he was dead if he tried to go back to first so he took off Mitchell fouls back the 2-1 pitch to the screen I almost would have liked to have seen Michael stop and and maybe try to get into an actual rundown instead of just going and and allowing himself to get tagged out at second 2-2 Low and out, ball three. Top of the order, Andy Nelson is on deck. The full count pitch to Gable. Line drive right back up the middle. Base hit into center field. I think that might have caught the pitcher, at least startled him. And Gable has his first hit of the day. Yeah, I think he looks fine. I, I thought the same thing at first, but um, yeah, he, he's holding his left arm a little funny, but I think he's I think he's all right here. And boy, now that's a uh, turns into kind of a big deal. But just take a few pitches, Andy. Yeah, keep playing away here. Mitchell at first base with two outs. The pitch to Nelson on the ground, right side. That's a base hit into right field. Mitchell stays at second base. Runners at first and second for Sam Peterson. All right. Andy's on for the third time today. His second base hit. Three singles in a row for Iowa. Now you know Petey's swinging at the first <laughs> pitch. He gets one that any place he likes it, he's swinging at it. Brief meeting of the minds between Kaskinet and Wagner. Nobody in the Purdue bullpen. No, and as I mentioned, he's been he's been good. Five, six, six, and six. So I don't think uh I don't think they expect him to stop. Now he, he hasn't thrown most of his pitch counts have been around eighty through hundred and three against Albany, but everything else has been in that eighty range. Wagner comes set, runners at first and second, two outs. The pitch to Petey. Swing and a miss. Got him with the off speed. Sam was trying to elevate it. I don't think he was expecting breaking ball, though. No. Here comes the 0 1 outside. That's, you might, uh, at some point, you might want to start. If, you, if you've got a reputation of swinging at the first pitch, you're probably not going to get a center center fastball anymore. 1 1. Hit high and deep in the air to left center. Bolton going back, along with Cornbloom. Who's there? It's Cornbloom who catches it 
in left center field right in front of the track to retire the side. No runs for Iowa in the fourth. Hawks lead at 3-2. to two. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% .9 reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hey, it's your friend, Social Media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day healthcare needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI Quick Care or Urgent Care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. Bottom of the fourth, Iowa leads at three to two. It'll be Sutter, Cornblum, and Stevens coming to the plate for the Boilers. Sounds like outs. Yeah, uh, the Hawks have done a decent job against them the first time through. Sutter popped up. Cornbloom struck out. Stevens did single but was stranded. Yeah, that extends. He now has a 10-game hitting streak. Three two Iowa in the fourth. Obermuller ready. First pitch to Sutter's in there for a strike. Iowa with eight hits today. Purdue with two. Nothing in one is the count. Pitch in the dirt. Ricochets off of Moore's shoulder and over to the left. One and one. Yeah, Iowa has exceeded the hit total from yesterday already. Three runs to show for it so far. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Sutter way behind that pitch from Obermuller. Well, that was kind of the, the report on Wagner was that you'd be able to hit him, but you know, he wasn't going to walk very many hitters, and he's only walked two and forced Iowa to put it in play. One two pitch is high. You know, the last inning, Iowa gets three singles, but doesn't get the doesn't get anything to show yeah. for it with the caught stealing. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Obermuller. Looked good. Came in the back door, but stayed low. Full count. Either Purdue has a great tell or they have made a decision that anything that's spinning, they just aren't going to swing at because those pitches are really, really good. Three twos hit foul. We'll do it again. I mean, the, they haven't swung at one of them that's been out of the zone. <laughs> the three two pitch or the two two pitch was slightly below the zone, but um, right in the center of the plate. So it's, I mean, man, to make that swing decision is, is pretty strong. Here's a 3-2. Got a piece of it and fouled it off again. And so, okay, if that's the case, then let's see if Iowa makes an adjustment to the adjustment. Start throwing the spin in the zone. True. And what you've seen here on the 3-2 pitch is Cade's gone to fastball twice. You know, that's the other side of it is you. But that plays into Purdue's hands because that makes you predictable and one-dimensional. Backdoor slider. Came in, didn't even have to knock. Called third strike. Obermuller sets down Sutter. The first out of the bottom of the fourth. You, know, you and I have sat in enough scouting reports on the other side of it. You know, when Coach Sutherland's talking about the other team's pitcher of, hey, he doesn't land this for a strike, it takes chase. 
my guess is Purdue has said, hey, he doesn't throw this for a strike. It's going to take Chase. So even on that one, Sutter's probably walking back to the dugout, and their hitting coach is like, yep, sorry, bad. that's my bad. Mm -hmm. Fastball low to Cornbloom because that was a great pitch. It just at the very last second caught the corner of the plate. Yeah, snapped in enough to, to you know, even with the small strike zone that we have today, the, he was able to get that pitch. Base is empty and one out. 1-0 one -oh is just outside, ball two. That's where you want to see Kate, Kate needs to understand what the home plate umpire is doing, and he needs to stop nibbling. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's he, he's not getting the edges. Purdue doesn't feel the need to swing at the edges. 2-0 -oh is fouled off of Moore's mask. And so, you know, you've got you've to come in. You know, again, I'm not suggesting that he needs to throw belt high center center on any of these things, but, uh, you know, off the plate isn't the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're going need to gonna need to make an adjustment here. You're, you're into the bottom of the fourth inning, so it's, it's no longer, huh, I wonder what's going to happen. It's, no, this is, what's, this is what is going on. Yes, this is the, the path. This is how it's, it's unfolding. Two balls and a strike. Obermuller comes set. He's ready. Where'd that miss? Whoa, ball three. Man, that is a great pitch. Must have been just high, just outside. Mm. Three balls and a strike now. The pitch popped up right side. That will find the seats, and it'll be a full count. It's just... <laughs> And it's a hard day to pitch. And I know Coach Heller said it was he, – he always liked pitching on cold days, but it's a hard day to pitch. And then you got a tiny strike zone up there. Full count again. Here's the pitch from Cade. Called third strike. Fastball at the knees. Got him. That's about as low as we've seen called there. That one's got enough of it to get, uh, to get umpire Buck's attention. It's taken a lot of work, but he's gotten the two outs here on the first two guys. Four strikeouts now for Cade on the afternoon. Here's Joe Stevens. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cade. Pitch to Stevens. Strike one. Low portion of the zone. Cade's rolling now. Well, you know, he... Now, I might be giving Kate a little too much credit for the pinpoint accuracy, but brought it up just enough and, you know, got attention here of the home plate umpire. Oh. Ah. Hit him. Hit him in the leg. And unfortunately, and hit Moore in the bare hand. Yeah, then kicked over to Moore and deflected off his throwing hand. Just as we say Cade was rolling and looking at another one, two, three inning, he... Hits a batter. We, keep the you, inning you, going. You said it, not we. You, you didn't agree it. with me, John? You, you said it. <laughs> I think we could agree that Cade was rolling with a couple of strikeouts to start the inning. Those were, those, were, those were work strikeouts. Those were both full count strikeouts. I like the called, called third strikes, though. That was kind of nice. Bring up Ty Gill. Mueller has to reset now. The pitch, high and tight, ball one. This will be pitch number 70 for Cade. Short lead at first base. 1-0 pitch, in there for a strike. Yeah, if you remember Gill's first at bat, he was overmatched and did everything he could to not swing at a ball at all right and so it's got to come in the zone here from Cade and make Gill use the bat count even at one throw it over to first base just a little lob from Cade the Hawkeyes will have Tello Huxdorf and Cop coming to the plate in the fifth right now Iowa leads three to two
Runner takes off. The pitch is high. Throw down to second base late. Stolen base for Stevens on the left-handed Obermuller. Sixth of the season. Good pitch to run on. Got a breaking ball. It was up a little bit, but Reese couldn't make that quick transition and throw it down there. Two and one. In the dirt now, ball three. Now this seems like a, a big point of the game. You get two outs, but it, risking a, a walk to the eight hitter who doesn't seem to want to swing the bat. 3-1. Called strike on the outside corner, full count. Ooh. I think every once in a while this umpire blinks and gives a... Uh, He's super tight, super tight, super tight, and then it's, okay, yeah, we'll call that one. And Selective. Gets a ball <laughs> off the plate, and that's the hardest umpire to work with. Mm -hmm. Full count pitch from Obermuller. Here it is. Fouled back to the screen. Yeah, because, I mean, you just, you have to be in the zone. You just, you can't, you can't count on, you can't count on getting any edge. Um, and so, you know, you have to stay there. You have to be in the zone. Uh, Purdue's doing a nice job adjusting, not chasing anything around the edges. 3-2, hit into the gap in left center. Huxdorf on the run. Kyle still running. Kyle dives, can't come up with it. It's down. Here comes the throw, and Gill is in with an RBI triple. We're tied at three. Boy, and that ball just kept slicing away from Huck. It held up in the air. Thought he was going to have a chance to get there because of how long it stayed in the air. But because of the left-handed hitter and because it was into the left center field gap, it just kept slicing off a huck and making his run that much longer and that much longer. And couldn't quite get there. Free base. The hit batter ends up to hurt the Hawks again. And now the go-ahead run. Is it third base? Here's the first pitch. It's swung on, hit into right. Nelson is back. He's got it for the third out to retire Spence. We're tied up again. It's three all. We'll head to the fifth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion, like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye Games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Top of the fifth. Iowa three, Purdue three. Tello, Huxdorf, and Cop coming up for the black and gold. And we are at basically the same number of pitches for each starting pitcher. Mm. And we have a tie score. So let's uh, let's start it over again. Dinged Wagner for 33 pitches in the first inning, and he's thrown just a little over double that in the last three innings. That waiting. nine pitch inning. I was waiting for you to do the actual math there to see how that was going to go for you. <laughs> Tello takes high for ball one. Raider today, 0 for 2. Struck out looking in the first. Takes a strike there, 1 and 1. <laughs> Ra 
Raider is the recipient of the Expanded Strike Zone to the Outside Award today. <laughs> Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Raider took out some frustration on that baseball right there. That was 108 ripped right back up the middle. But that's why you don't chase that ball on the outside. You can't do anything with it anyway. Now he comes back with a fastball, makes a mistake in the middle of the plate, and you demolish it. I was at bats look a lot better today. As a whole, for sure. I mean, and obviously you're not going to have you're not going to have 40 great at bats every time, and so you know you're just trying to minimize minimize the oopses and particularly minimize the timing of the oopses. It, it felt like as we were as we were getting prepared for this game today. We'd learn a lot about the Iowa team the first few innings uh, after yesterday's result. Yeah, I, I had mentioned to someone that uh, this wasn't about whether Iowa won or not. It was how they responded early on, and, and I think you've seen a, a good response. Uh, now, again, you want to go win the game, but um, you, you've seen a good response. The hitters have been better. Cade's been good on the mound. Hawksdorf chases a pitch that was in the other batter's box. Whoa, don't see Kyle swing at that too often. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. That one was, you know, whether he was trying to ambush something and had his mindset. And I mean, that's, you got to trust your training and you mm. hear Coach Sutherland say, trust your brakes. Brakes didn't work on that one. Brakes were out. <laughs> that, was, that was runaway truck going down, <laughs> going down the mountain hill there. No balls, one strike for Huxdorf now. Tello at first base. Pitch. Low outside corner, strike two. Boy, that ball's off the plate too, but. And it's a great pitch because after you chase the other pitch so far out, you're probably going to be a little hesitant to, to chase outside of the zone. 0-2. Oh, low, ball one. And so you you know you've got brakes on there. You've got the emergency brakes. You know, it's kind of the old uh, the brake stand when you're a kid. You know, you're riding the brake and you just can never accelerate then. And so, perfect pitch on the outside part mm -hmm. of the zone. Short lead at first base for Raider. Here comes the one two. Not quite yet. They'll throw it over. They don't want Tello going anywhere. Yep. He and Davis Cop have been <laughs> talking about the moves over. Add Will Mofluer in there and. Interesting day of pickoff moves for the not in the top third of speediest Hawkeyes. No. How about that? One two is in the dirt. That time Kyle laid off. Ball two. They do pick a lot. That that was the that was the theme coming into this series. They did get Seegers earlier today. Two balls, two strikes to Iowa center fielder. The pitch from Wagner ripped down the line and left, but foul. Well, I'm going to tell you, if Iowa runs a hit-and-run game with Raider Tello, I'll be really, really surprised with the left-hander on the mound. Maybe they do it if there's a right-hander on there. Um, I, I don't see Raider. Uh, you know, Raider has a Raider has a one-way lead. Raider's goal right now is to not get picked off first base mm -hmm. um, and then advance to wherever he can advance to when Huck gets a hit. Long at bat now. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch, swing and a miss. Huck is out number one. That leads to Davis Cop. Time called, home plate umpire is having a discussion with Purdue's head coach Greg Goff. What could this be about? And I'd like, home plate umpire told him to stop coming forward, made him stay off the dirt. I'm not sure what they could possibly be talking about. I'm not sure what his anger would be there on the strikeout. Home plate umpire's just shaking his head, no. I don't know whether <laughs> Huck said something, whether he... I, I have no idea. Huck seemed like he just walked back to the dugout. Hmm. All right, ready to move on. This is Cop. One out. We're in a tie game, three to three in the fifth. I'm going to – probably the most politically correct way that I can say this is I've learned some things from the Purdue team this week. There we go. <laughs> you are so kind, John. 
Davis takes ball low. I've had to bite my tongue a number of times this weekend. It's grown back a few times already. <laughs> I've got Sue all out in the bullpen warming up. They keep throwing it over to first. They they just feel like they're breaking their own rhythm, but Tello is two steps off the bag. He's got a little bit of a bigger lead now. Here's the 1-0 to Cop. Ground ball to the right side, backhand stop. No, it's off his glove, into shallow center. Raider, round second base, headed for third. Here comes the throw. He is safe. It hit him in the back of the head. Stay on the bag, Raider. <laughs> the ball hit him right in the back and parked right down below him. He wasn't sure where it went. It's a good piece of hitting there, and looks like they'll give it a hit right away. Um, I think the second baseman probably should have come up with that ball. But, I do, too. But, again, it... it, it you give an error if he misses a routine play. He did not miss a routine play. He missed a, a backhand play. You want him to make it um, if you're Purdue. Um, but now runners on the corners for the Hawks. As he was unable to come up with it. A good piece of base running from Raider there to recognize. Got out into shallow center field and, and just kept right on cooking. Did not stop. Did not slow down. He kept rolling. And now Iowa's got a chance to... Retake the lead with a mound visit occurring as we speak. Coach Sutherland pulls his runners off the bags and he'll bring Reese Moore over and they will discuss. Well, and you're going to see, you, know, you weren't going to see a pitching change here as Wagner's going to face Moore. You know, Suval, the right hander down in the bullpen, whether he's ready or not, you're going to leave, you're going to leave the lefty in to face, to face Moore in this case. And, Obviously, Moore's been, you know, he, he's had a little bit of chase in him. He's grounded into a double play. He had another ground ball today. So, you know, if you're Purdue, you're just, you're just that away from getting out of the inning, even though it's first and third and one out. Um, you know, did see him try to bunt earlier. Um, not sure that's exactly in Reese's wheelhouse, but. Reese is grounded into a couple of – he's grounded out a couple times today. One was a double play in the first that ended the threat for the Hawks. So they've got a shift on for him now over to the right side. Haven't seen this in the first two at-bats. First pitch to Reese. Takes outside, ball one. Big spot in today's game. Well, and they're anticipating bunt, too, as the first baseman didn't just pop off the bag. He popped off and in. You know, you almost have to bunt this – toward the third baseman, make him feel it if you're going to do it. There's a breaking ball for a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Doesn't look like the oh, bunt geez. is on yet. <laughs> oh, that was low. That was pretty low. Tons of room, middle of the field, extend over to the left fielder. Short stop, left center field, push it that way. One, one is outside, ball two. Reese is batting 353. He's got 15 RBIs on the season. 2 1 pitch. We'll wait for it. I'll throw it over to keep Cop close. I don't know how he can get much closer than a step. Half a step. Yeah, again, these on aren't. On the bag. These aren't the. Uh... Uh, these aren't the blazing game playing base runners that the Hawkeyes can put out there. 2 1. Call to strike. 2 and 2. Mofler on deck. Huge opportunity right now for Iowa to regain the lead. The Hawks have 10 hits today. Three runs to show for it. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Wagner toes the rubber. Another throw over to first. Yeah, his pitch clock went about to expire mm -hmm. there. He didn't have he didn't have a lot of options unless he was ready to deliver. Now set for the two two. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Two down.
The low pitches have really crushed Reese to the, uh, this weekend. Reese has been a Reese has been a willing chaser of uh, of changeups and and sliders away, and this will draw the pitching change. Will Mulfler will see a new Purdue pitcher when we come back. Runners at the corners in two outs. In the top of the fifth, the door opens in the Purdue bullpen out in left field. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need, whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. New pitcher into the game for Purdue in the fifth inning. They'll turn to a senior right-hander, Aaron Suval. 2-0 and on the season in seven appearances with a 6.23 ERA, 13 innings pitched, 14 hits, 10 runs, 9 have earned, 9 walks, 14 strikeouts. Opponents hitting him at just 269, only giving up one ex extra base hit. So, done a pretty good job there. Maybe the best walk-up music I've heard so far. <laughs> the fastball is going to be in the uh, just above 90. He's got a slider. He's got a changeup. In kind of a uh, a different arm action, you know. You, you know, you think of uh, you know, last year Luke Llewellyn, even a Justin Hackett. You know that big long arm action. Exactly the opposite here for Suval. Gets it kind of right up on his ear. So 90 miles an hour will play a little faster just because it just kind of it shoots out of the hand and kind of disrupts your timing a little bit. Mulfler making his first start today uh, of the season. And he's got a, a chance to give Iowa the lead in the fifth. It's three to three. Yeah, this is another guy that kind of needs you to chase to be effective. So use the experienced Mulfler here and stick to the zone. Runners at the corners and two outs. Will in the box. First pitch in there for a strike. Mulfler singled and scored in the second. It doesn't like coming in and seeing change up for mm. the first pitch. Mm -hmm. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Downstairs, ball one. Wind seems to have shifted a bit. Instead of blowing in, like right towards first base, it looks like it might be blowing over to the right field foul pole, maybe out a little bit to right. Here comes the 1-1. Mulfler bunts it down the third base side, and it will be foul. Tello and Cascanet were on a collision course on the third baseline. Yeah, that was going to be a problem for Iowa anyway, as Tello was... was Tello would have needed to jam on the brakes and head back anyhow as he was going to run into the out. He had not cleared the catcher. He had not gotten by him no, by the time Kaskinek got the ball. And wasn't going to, so it was going to be... There was going to be an issue to be reckoned with there. <laughs> All right. Well, one ball, two strikes, two outs. Suval toes the rubber. The right-hander is ready. The pitch, called third strike. Breaking ball got him, and the Hawks leave two on base. We're tied at three, bottom of the third, com bottom of the fifth coming up. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. 
nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course. Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork, and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Three to three in game two of the series between Purdue and Iowa. We'll wrap things up tomorrow at the same time, noon central, for the Hawks and the Boilers. Hopefully with an opportunity to win the series. Got to win this one to have that chance. Got to win this one to have that chance. That is exactly right. You need to like to see a good inning here from Cade. Top of the order, so a huge spot. Huge spot if you're Purdue, too. You know, this is kind of when you want to take advantage of it and you're seeing Cade for the third time, so. Well, and... Iowa had an opportunity to score in the fifth. And now Purdue maybe has some of the momentum with getting that getting that stop, getting out of there without surrendering a run. Obermuller back out for his fifth inning of work. A couple of Hawkeye relievers in the bullpen, but just hanging out for now. Kate at pitch number 78 is a strike to Bolton. One and one. Bolton's 0 for 2 today. One one pitch. Low and out, ball two. Bolton does the best job of anybody I've seen of showing bunt and then somehow not actually having it be where the umpire thinks you went for it. And he almost turns to face the pitcher after that too, which he takes the bat with him. Two one is high and a bit inside. Ball three. You do not want to walk him. That, nope. tur that turns into a double. <laughs> Automatic speed threat. Obermuller's 3-1 is behind Bolton to the backstop. Reese will have to hustle after it. Bolton is on first with a walk to start the fifth. That's the first time we've seen Cade miss wildly. Yeah, that Did Didn't really matter because it's ball four, but... First time we haven't had to have the hitter even think about it. Yeah, that wasn't even in the zip code of, of home plate. It was barely in the zip code of the left-handed batter's box, which is where Bolton was standing. So now this is where Purdue can implement their, their short game. Because Gasser's got a lot of speed. Bolton's at first base with speed. That's where it gets tricky. To me, if you're Purdue, I probably show bunt, but I don't think that I bunt. I let Bolton try to steal second first. And then if he steals second, then I probably try to bunt him to third. Uh, but I'm not sure that uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to bet that my runner is better than your catcher. And I'm going to give him an opportunity mm -hmm. to steal the base mm -hmm. without sacrificing him. Over yeah. And let two 400 hitters have a chance to drive him in after that. See what Purdue elects to do. Bolton at first. Gasser's the batter. Try and move over to first. Hawks will just lob it over. Gasser walked and scored in the first. He popped up to Tello in the third. Another throw over to first base. Three to three game in the fifth. Iowa out hitting Purdue ten to three.
Cade is ready. First pitch is bunted right back to Obermuller. He's got it. He'll throw it to first base for the out. Good execution by Iowa's bunt defense there. Really was, you know, because Cade had to, the left-hander had to spin, and he uh, he didn't hold back anything on the throw, threw it aggressively, and you know, Purdue took a little different approach than uh, than I would have on that. But they've also got a guy coming up that hit a home run. So mm -hmm. this is Gaffney. He's reached base both previous plate appearances. Bolton at second base. Base hit will score him. First pitch from Obermuller is a strike. Good start for Cade. Yeah, if you're the Hawkeye outfield, you got to know. Uh, Bolton, Bolton, is going to, Bolton is going to try to score on any ball in the grass. So wherever it is to you. 0-1 is hit in the air to right. Nelson takes a step back, now jogs forward. He's got it for the second out. And no advancement on the throw. Bolton has to stay put at second base. Good job by Andy to get the ball in. Huge, huge play and huge out there to give yourself a chance. Respect job's not done. Resp right, the, the, yeah, the job's not done. But respected Andy's arm enough. Bolton was ready in position to tag and then went back to the spot. Good enough throw kept him there. Here's Kaskinet. Three infielders on the left of second base. First pitch. Check swing, and it's a swinging bunt. Moore picks it up. He'll throw it to first base for the third out. The Hawks catch a break there and keep Purdue off the scoreboard in the fifth. We're tied at three. Sixth inning coming up. Seegers, Mitchell, Nelson to the plate for the Hawks. We're back after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox home comfort specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Suval back out for another inning of work for Purdue. He came in and got the final out of the fifth by striking out Mofler. So righty on righty matchup to start the, uh, the inning, the sixth, with Seegers first up. Mitchell swing around and bat from the left side. Let's see now with nobody on if Suval attacks a little bit more with fastballs here early in counts anyway. Be up to Seegers and Mitchell to find something they like and get hold the zone. Don't uh, don't go chasing outside. Another uh, reliever that was top of the scouting report expected to see Suval today. Yeah, no, certainly no, no surprise here. I think he was up yesterday, or had a chance to throw yesterday, and um, there's a couple of other really nice, uh, nice relievers out there in the bullpens who kind of want to score, score next here. He'll fire the first pitch in there for a strike out of the windup to Seegers. Here's the 0-1, popped up right side. That'll get out of play, nothing in two. Michael singled his last time up in the fourth. 
We're in the sixth now, tied at three. Iowa out hitting Purdue 10 to three. Clean baseball played defensively, neither team with an error. Here's the 0-2 to Michael. High, a little bit inside as well, one and two. Two balls have really gone to that changeup a couple times. Been, been very effective with it. There's a pretty significant bump to that changeup, too. There's a lot of movement on it. The one two delivery on its way home. Check swing. Michael did not go. Ball two. So Purdue had an opportunity in the fifth by getting their speed uh, base runners on. Boy, if you get Michael on with Gable right behind him, see if Iowa can implement their, their short game. But one step at a time, see if Michael can. Find his way on. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Lined foul again. And obviously, Michael been a leadoff hitter in his career, so this is uh, just like starting all those games now here in the yeah. sixth inning. Two balls, two strikes. Chased a high pitch, but hit it foul. Stayed alive. Temptation for Michael now is he's into he's into protect mode, so got to be careful here on on side change up down low and in the dirt. There it was in the dirt, way too far in front of the plate though, and Michael knew that right out of the hand. He did not have to offer at that full count pitch. Yeah, fortunately there was no version of a chase pitch involved <laughs> in that one. Seems like one of the rare times that the Hawks have have worked a, a full count, usually doing some damage before that. Here's the 3-2. Ground ball to the right side. Long run by the second baseman. He gloves it in the palm of his mitt and throws it to first base to get Michael by a step. Yeah, that wasn't the ideal way to feel the ball, but it had enough stick em on the glove that it didn't, uh, didn't bounce out. So now we'll see Gable Mitchell but with the bases empty and one out. Tie game in the six, it's three to three. Suval winds and fires. Ball downstairs. Okay, they, Purdue clearly doesn't think Gable can drag bunt at all. The second baseman feet on the grass, first baseman feet on the grass. Way back on the right side. Third baseman in. Mitchell pops it up, shallow right. First baseman moving back. Second baseman is also in the area, and he makes a sliding catch into the wall. Two down. Foul territory made the grab. And here comes Andy Nelson with two outs and nobody on. Well, five of the ten Hawkeye hits have come from the next three Hawkeye hitters. So, been a top-heavy lineup today. A little bit. First pitch to Andy is low. Suval has not done a good job getting ahead of Iowa hitters. That's no doubt, but he's done a nice job to work back and eventually get him out. Here's the 1-0. In there for a strike, one and one. Nelson has reached all three times today. Make it four. Base hit into left. One hops in front of Bolton for his fourth, uh, his third single of the day. Yeah, he's, wow. He's seeing the baseball pretty well. And any time you can get Petey in the box, nobody out, one out, two outs. You like your chances. Petey's been hitting the ball really hard today, was held off base yesterday, 0 for 4, but today 2 for 3 with a sharp line out to center in there. Two outs, Nelson at first base. Petey takes in the dirt, ball one. So ball's not exceptionally fast to the plate, so if you, you can get to a spot where you're – and maybe you can you can expect the changeup or think the changeup's coming, and maybe you can get a good uh, good lead. But we're going to have a mound visit, maybe. 
home, the uh, Purdue head coach is coming out to talk with the home plate umpire. Oh, we didn't stop him at the dirt. This, yeah, we're going to. Looks like there's a change coming, John. The uh, cards are out. This is an interesting way to make it. Usually you bring out, you make a change to the field when you go talk to the umpire. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just kind of, hey, here's my guy. And interesting, you let him throw the first pitch ball before you make the change. And now there's a mound visit. Including all the infielders. Still haven't opened the door down there. Well, that's they're not letting Petey leave the. So I, I don't know that there is a change. No change, coming. I don't think. I think he, maybe it was a question of how many visits do I have left or something because wouldn't let Petey go to the dugout. So yeah. it wasn't a it wasn't a hey unless you want your time out don't go over there. No change coming for Purdue. That was very strange all the way around. <laughs> well, I also think it was one of those you buy just that little bit of extra beat of time for your reliever by Coach Jim Barnes and the volleyball team does it with, hey, how many timeouts do I have left? Coach, you know you've used them both. Well, okay. <laughs> just checking. Pickoff move to first, very close. And, and every every volleyball coach does that. It's not a... Uh, it's not a now we're going to have a review. They want to review it at first base. First baseman's telling him don't do it, but too late. <laughs> Look at him at first base. He's just throwing his palms to the sky like, what, what? Why did we just review that? I'm telling you, he's safe. I think we review that because we're, 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 we're buying time. We're still buying doing time that, again. huh? I, I, All right. <sighs> I, I'm, there, there's, there's a big part of me that will be really surprised if Suval throws another pitch that counts. He's about to throw another warm-up pitch mm -hmm. here, but uh, I'll be surprised if he throws a pitch that matters. Speaking of pitches that count, do you think we see Cade Obermuller again? What, Cade is sitting at 85? Um... Yes. Yeah. Saw Jack Young warming up for a little bit, but we know that he's sort of a situational. He used to put out the fire yeah. guy, so he's to come in when things are when things are furry, and um, obviously they're not furry at the top of the inning. So yeah, I think I think we'll see Cade. Uh, we'll see Cade come back out. I mean, he's got a hundred. He's got a hundred pitches in him, so. We're in the top of the six, tied at three. An official review on a pickoff move at first base is taking place now. So did you see where they went? Uh, they went over to the right. Far end of Oh, no, I see it. It's all the way down there. Yeah, it's. I got it. Yeah, down the line there, outdoors. Past the dirt. Yes. And so they're still looking at it. You'd think that this would be pretty quick, but uh, it is taking a little, a little bit longer. To take a look at it. 11 hits for Iowa, 3-4 for Purdue. The count is 1-0 and oh for Peterson if he gets to continue his at-bat. As a couple of umpires are looking at the the replay monitor down the line and right. Headsets removed. It's a SpongeBob meme to this. A thousand years <laughs> later. <laughs> and he is safe at first base. All right. Then let's, watch. let's play. Well, let's watch to see if he pops out of the dugout now and makes his pitching change. What do you think? Oh, he's on the top step. <laughs> this, is, this has all been a game. Well, he backed off the oh. top step. Oh, yeah. There's, They're going to stick with him. He's just calling defensive positioning now. Playing in the don't let him hit it over your head position. After all that, Petey, come on. One ball, no strikes. Pitch to Sam. Swing and a miss. Chasing outside. Probably. Uh, you know, but that's one of those that, uh, again, the reason you take that change up, though, is what can you do with it? Yeah. One and one now. Discipline, Petey. 
Runner takes off. Pitch is outside. Throw to second base is not in time. A little bit offline. Nelson gets into scoring position. And now you've got a 2-1 count, so you've got a position. But, but again, don't, don't expand your zone. Pick a spot. Pick a tunnel you want to hit it out of. All you need is a base hit. Doesn't need to be the extra variety to bring home Nelson now. At least have a great chance at it. Two balls and a strike. Suval toes the rubber. Here's the pitch to Peterson. Outside, ball three. Now I would guess I, that's the best pitch Petey's going to see if I had to guess. Not that Raider Tello's an easy out, but they're, they're not going to give they're not going to give Petey a fastball here in the middle of the plate. He's going to see that change up again. It's probably going to be either outside or down. Unless he throws a mistake, the 3-1 in there for a strike. And that's the change up on the outside edge of the plate. Peterson was a couple steps towards first base. Coach Heller is letting the home plate umpire know about it. Full count. I hope that didn't ruffle the feathers of the umpire. Here comes the 3-2. Low and out, Peterson holds off, ball four. Like I said, that was, that was about the best he was going to see, was something like that. So now Raider Tello is going to have to have that same discipline because the first pitch he's going to see is going to be, I'm going to guess it's going to be that change up on the outside part of the plate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Except for he's going to see it from a different guy. Can have a different pitcher. Pitching change for Purdue in the sixth. We're tied at three. There are two outs, runners at first and second for the Hawkeyes. Raider Tello will come to the plate after this pitching change break. Still waiting. Oh, he's coming. He's coming out of there. Maybe a little urgency out of him, but uh, we'll take a pitching change break. We're back after this. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Before we dazzle you with Jackson Danley's stats, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Jackson Danley into the game for Purdue, and he's a senior right-hander. They go to their ace, so it tells you how big of a spot this is. Seven appearances, five saves, just a 183 ERA, 19 and two-thirds innings, seven hits, four runs allowed, nine walks, 23 strikeouts. Opponents hitting him at just a 115 batting average. Fastball is going to be in the low 90s. He throws a slider off that. Uh, he's got a little bit of a cutter that he's thrown more lately. Um, Really doesn't use the slider a ton. It's that it's a fastball and the cutter mix kind of off that. So, hmm. you know, opposite field movement, stay on the pitches. Um, he does, like, again, he hasn't walked a ton of guys, but don't expand the zone for him and make him throw strikes. So Danley comes in in the sixth, usually in the game in the eighth and ninth for Purdue. So... Uh, like John mentioned, a big spot. This is where Purdue values it, but, man, for the rest of the game, they'll probably have to go to somebody else one way or another. Well, but Danley's a guy, too. He's not your traditional closer. Three and two-thirds, three, three, one, three, three, three. So he can go a little bit longer. Yeah, so he's not, he's not coming in. You know, of those saves, uh, 
you know, he, again, he has the five saves. He got one by throwing three and two-thirds innings. He got a second by throwing three innings. Actually, every, all, the, all five saves he has has come in his three-inning-plus appearances. Wow. All right. Runners at first and second for Tello. Two outs. First pitch that Raider sees. Check swing. He went around. That pitch was way low and out. Three to three ball game in the sixth. Nelson at second, Peterson at first. Try a pickoff move to second, wide throw to the bag. Jackson had to work his shoulder out after throwing that one. Yeah. <laughs> Raider one for three today. A one pitch. Lifted in the air to left, and it is right to Mike Bolton. He caught it for the third out. Iowa gets a couple of base runners, but leave them on. We're back for the bottom of the six right after this. Three to three is our score. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work, too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? <laughs> Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great right out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. Proud sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular, wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Cato Bermuller returns for the sixth inning. He's allowed three hits today. Cade has struck out four. He's walked four, allowing three earned runs. A little bit of a, well, a couple of extra base hits, a triple and a home run. 85 pitches for Cade through five. Well, it's the free base, though, that hurt Cade. You know, the one, the walk in the first inning was followed by the home run. The hit by pitch in the fourth inning was followed by the triple. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's why the extra base hits hurt then when you've given the freebies. Starts on top with strike one to Logan Sutter. 0 for 2 today including a strikeout. A one pitch. Off the plate outside. One and one. Five, six, and seven come to the plate for the Boilers. The one one is taken inside. Out of the zone from Obermuller. So he started on top and then threw two in a row out of the zone. Yeah, now he needs to find the answer. Can't completely give in here, but needs to find the answer. The 2 1 hit down the line and right, and that will get foul out of play. Two and two. Good fastball there from Cade down low in the zone. Kind of in the middle of the plate, got it just off a little, but kept it down enough that Sutter couldn't do a bunch with it. Two balls, two strikes. Low and out, ball three. A couple of times, Cade's tried to throw that sweeper that you just kind of just kind of see it's going to stay outside. It's got a little little aim to it and just kind of floats out there. Full count pitch, big pitch. Here's a ground ball, left side, Seegers, backhand, throw from the hole to first base, pulls Muffler off the bag at first, and it's a leadoff single 
for Sutter. Ball kept moving away from Michael. He had to go basically full extension on that backhand stop. Yeah, the worst part was he could never get wrapped around it enough to be able to plant the foot, so he couldn't get anything on the throw. Uh, boy, we saw it yesterday. Infield singles just ate the Hawkeyes' lunch. It's a slow infield. That grass seems really slow. Cooper Cornbloom comes up. We'll have time call, and looks like that's Coach Heller out of the Iowa dugout. That's Sav, I think. I believe it is Aaron Savory in the Iowa bullpen. I'm in agreement with you, John. A pitching change coming for Iowa in the bottom of the sixth. Three to three game. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Bottom of the sixth inning, Iowa makes a change on the mound. Right-handed sophomore from Dubuque, Aaron Savory, enters the game. 1-0 on the season in six appearances with a 3.86 ERA, nine and a third innings. He's given up nine hits, four runs, all earned, three walks, 11 strikeouts. Opponents getting him at just a 250 batting average. You know, Saf's got a good mix of pitches. Fastball is going to get up there right around 90, a little plus or minus. Certainly, lot, lots of frisbees. Yeah, a lot different than Cade, right? Well, yeah, you're coming from the other side. You know, maybe the same frisbee idea, but uh, frisbee's going to be moving the opposite direction. Savory finishing up his warm-up pitches. He'll face the six-hitter Cooper Cornbloom, who's 0 for 2 today with a couple of strikeouts. 3-3 three to three game in the sixth. Good baseball game today, being well played by both teams. I see if... Uh, if Purdue goes short game again, they did that earlier with uh, with Gasser bunting Bolton over. See if now Cornbloom bunts over Sutter to try to move the runner up into scoring position, particularly with a couple of uh, couple of strikeouts to his name so far today. Yeah, and it's been the bottom of the order for Purdue that's done a nice job. Stevens and Gill have you know a couple of hits, and we haven't the Hawks have not been able to get them out today. And the Spence at the bottom of the order has flied out, but has made loud outs. Far different than yesterday, where it felt like the top. I think the top of the order yesterday was 10 of 18 for for Purdue, and and the bottom didn't really do any damage today. They've been able to keep innings alive and keep turning the lineup over. Savory versus Cornbloom, we're ready, and here's a bunt attempt that is knocked foul before Cornbloom could even get out of the box. So they're in your line of thinking there, John. To, to, to do a sacrifice bunt. Yeah, I would think you might see him now. That that had kind of the bunt hit, yeah. sack bunt if it works out idea. My guess is you might see an earlier square here and give it up that way. Short lead at first base. Raider is pulled in on the grass at third. 0-1 pitch from Savory. The attempt is missed. He went around. It's nothing in two. Yeah, 100%. Well, he, he pulls his bat back and tries to act like he didn't, but he just punched at it. And the home plate umpire even sent it on to first for an appeal, John. He didn't even call it from home plate. I mean, that just, that was the most most obvious bunt attempt around. And I guess the fact that you pull it back after you, you tried. <laughs> Here's the 0-2. Outside for a ball. Sav's going to need to do a better job of holding Sutter. I know Sutter isn't necessarily a, a base-stealing threat, but he's getting a great secondary lead, kind of timing up Sav's look. And it's so, that vault lead that we saw, what, Jacksonville State? Yep. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Savory comes set. 
The pitch, high and out with the fastball. Count even at two now. Unfortunately, after getting ahead 0 and 2, the last two pitches from Aaron haven't really been competitive. So there's been no. We saw that a little bit from Morales yesterday too. He'd get ahead and then, you know, kind of waste two pitches that weren't really any good. So needs to have to get back in the zone here. Try and move over to first base. Good job by Sav to keep the runner close. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Savory comes set. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Ground ball right side, high chopper. Sav leaps for it, can't make the play. It's Mitchell. He slings it over to first base, out at first. Oh, what a play. He was out. Now, I'm not sure if Mulfleur's. He was out based on the timing of it. I'm not sure if Mulfleur's foot was on the bag. And we will have a review. The, uh, the umpire is coming together. This is going to be close, John. I, I'm, I'm with you. Mitchell came forward at second base. The ball never got out of the, the grass infield. It never got to the dirt. Savory gave a great effort to grab it, but couldn't. It was over his head. I think Mitchell's angle was sort of thrown off because for a moment it seemed like he thought that Sav was going to pick it up. And Mitchell sort of sidearm on the run, threw it over to first, and it might have pulled Mulfler off the bag. And Mitchell likes – Mitchell's a great defender. That's the one throw that, that he's had some trouble with this year, kind of the, the, the moving forward uh, – you know, it just ha hasn't always been as accurate there. Now, again, we don't necessarily know what camera angles they have, and so do you get a good enough angle that can tell you that Will wasn't on the bag? That's where it might play to Iowa's benefit. Three to three right now in the sixth. Still a review taking place down the right field line. Just doesn't feel like this is a tie game, John. It feels like the Hawks should be winning. <laughs> Out hitting Purdue 11 to 4. Had a lot of opportunities. I was left nine runners on mm. base. Purdue's just left four. Just doesn't feel like it should be tied, but we are. And so that's the situation. Coach Heller talking with the umpires down the first baseline. And he may be looking for some version of a of an interference call as well. As Gable was coming in to make the play. Did Sutter impede him in any way? And mm. I don't necessarily know the answer to that. I was and, and you know, the answer may be a quick and easy no. Um, but you know, you ask you ask the question anyway, just to make sure. Long review. So whatever they're looking at. Longer view would tell me they don't have they either don't have great camera angles or as I learned from volleyball, they may not know how to operate the little the little <laughs> dialy gizmo that gets. <laughs> it is tough that that there's a control to operate the replay system that it would take me a while to figure out. Oh. He is out at first base after the review. So Hawks will take whatever uh, whatever they got there. So Cornbloom is out. Runner does advance to second base. That's Sutter out there. Yeah, that was basically the bunt. It, uh, yeah. it didn't work out. The, I mean, it, it worked out functionally the same. Cost Cornbloom an at-bat. <laughs> Instead of a uh, sack, he gets the at-bat charge. Seven and eight have done a nice job against Iowa today. Two free bases and two base hits. Their first four plate appearances. This is Stevens, the seven hitter. First pitch from Sav. Dropped in there for a strike. Nothing and one. Super breaking ball there. Tie game. Three to three in the bottom of the sixth. One out runner at second. Savory's got the sign from Moore. Aaron comes set. He's ready. Try a pickoff move to second. And it got knocked down by Mitchell as Gable had to dive for it to knock it down. Huck was around, but you just don't want to risk that. I know Sutter doesn't have a ton of speed. 
yeah, by the time he gets out from under Gable, I don't know if he'd have been able to get there. But yeah, you don't really want to take down three for Gable. Test the theory. <laughs> yeah. No balls and a strike. Savory's ready. The pitch high and out. Yeah, Sav looks like he's aiming a couple of those instead mm -hmm. of you know early in the season we've seen him kind of free throwing those, doing a really nice job. Just really trying to kind of point that breaking ball instead of just letting it go. 1-1 one, one is hit on the ground to Mitchell at second base. He's got it. He'll step. He'll throw. Two down. The runner advances the third. Had him played perfectly up the middle there. He was holding him on base anyway, so able to field that roller easily. Huge spot. Let's get out of this. Gil just got his pep talk from Stevens about what to expect on the on the breaking ball, but that one was actually Sav tried to sneak the fastball past him. Aaron will go back to the windup now with the runner at third and two outs. First pitch, strike one on the outside corner. Iowa has Huxdorf, Kopp, and Moore due up in the seventh. Let's get there sooner rather than later. Yes, please. Here's the 0-1. Strike two, outside corner. Oh, fastball. Yeah. Where's that call been all day? <laughs> Kate Obermuller might still be dealing if he got a couple of those. Finish the deal here, Aaron. Nothing too good, but go right at him. Yeah, don't, uh, don't get too far out of the zone. 0-2. Oh, Ground ball to Mitchell at second base. He'll sprint over to first. He'll toss it to Mulfler for the third out. And Purdue leaves the runner at third. Outstanding job from Savory. Came back in the zone, but it was a really good breaking ball down low in the zone, middle of the plate, induced the ground out. We head to the seventh all tied up. Three consecutive ground balls to second to Mitchell to end that six after a leadoff single by Sutter. We'll go to the seventh, three to three. Let's get some runs, Hawks. We're back after this. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. We need something sweet today, John. We've been deprived of sweet treats on this trip. We need a, we need a sweet victory first, and then uh, we'll see if we can find something around town. I would feel a lot better about hitting downtown Boilerville with a Hawkeye win. <laughs> Three to three in the top of the seventh. Some work to do. Kyle Huxdorf will lead it off. Danley is the pitcher for Purdue. A legal pitch. Held that pause forever, just like we saw yesterday. And the home plate umpire is out to talk with the pitcher, and so is the head coach of Purdue. He immediately jumps off the step and... So the, the background of this was, and if you were listening yesterday, Morales did it twice. The first time was, hey, I can get away with it. And he's just trying to disrupt the hitter's timing. The second time he did it was basically, oh, yeah, you, you like the first one, did you, Hawkeye dugout? Here's the here. – and he got called for it then. I am sure that the Hawkeye dugout made mention of, you know, the quick pitches that Morales was throwing yesterday – are supposed to be balls. Now, 
We'll see. I don't. I don't see a ball up on the score. Yeah, there it went. So okay. yeah, the ball is called because of the illegal pitch, and that's what should have happened yesterday on all the quick pitches and the motion chicanery. One zero is low and out for ball two. Wow, Danley is slow in all of it. The step over, the rise of the leg. But we saw this in Jacksonville of what can happen when the ump umpire came out and talked to Zach Volker. You know, it can, can kind of get in your brain a little bit. Huck takes a strike on the inside corner. It can uh, derail the rhythm of the Boilermaker pitcher. Well, he doesn't seem to have adjusted much. So there, there must have been some little click that he mm -hmm. did that he was okay with. 2-1 to Huckstorf. Fouled straight back. Two and two. He is still slow. It's continuous motion now, but it is very, very slow. Which, again, then makes 93 fastball play fast. Yep, great point. Sort of lulls you to sleep with the delivery, and then boom. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball left side. Takes a funny hop. Diving stop by the player at third. He'll throw it over to first base. It's way late. That's an incredible stop, though, by Stevens at third. That bounce off the lip of the grass, kick straight up. He gloved it as he was diving above his head. As soon as he had to dive, he had no chance to get Huxdorf. And so I appreciate his effort to throw. First baseman was already coming off the bag. Ball did kind of squirt past, but not far enough for Huck to advance. You think that's a double if that gets through? I don't know if Bolton... Because of how far Bolton is over still, maybe. See if the Hawks go short game here with, with Davis Cobb. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cobb has been strong today with a couple of singles, but third baseman Stevens playing in on the grass. Quick pickoff move to first. Huck is back. Well, now, a fairly important thing to note here, Purdue's out of challenges. Mm -hmm. So they have challenged twice so uh, and lost both of them. So... There, there are no more, hey, I'd, I'd like the headphones on. So not knowing how that actually factors into Huck's lead or not. Yep. First pitch is in the dirt. Huck takes off for a second. No bunt necessary. Huck is safe at second base. And that was in the scouting report, too, of, of this catcher is a hard blocker. Cascanet, the ball bounces away from him. That ball didn't really bounce that far away from him, but a great read from Huck just utilizing speed. And now you can decide. You can still bunt him if you yeah, want. It's a possibility. We'll see what the Hawks choose to do. And if I bunt, I'm pushing it to third again and make. Because third base is back. First base is even with the bag, maybe a bit in front of it. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Cop. It's in the dirt again. Okay, maybe I wouldn't bunt. Maybe I'd let this guy throw us a strike first. Nobody out. Huxdorf at second base. Three to three is the score in the top of the seventh. We're getting to the late innings. Two balls, no strikes to Davis Kopp. Danley comes set. The right-hander deals. Kopp gives it a ride deep to right, but it's foul. Two and one. In case for some reason you're listening to us and not watching the Iowa women play, 18-11, Iowa women lead about three minutes to go in the first quarter. All right. Carver's packed today. Two balls and one strike. Cop squared to bunt. He pulled it back. The pitch gets away from the catcher again, all the way to the backstop, and Huck gets to third. Danley's been all over the place, primarily low, bouncing and skipping every pitch to Cop. Yeah, that is, I was just kind of looking. I mean, geez, he's got three wild pitches on the year. I mean, before now. But he's <laughs> he got, basically doubled it. He's got two more now, but I mean, he's, been, he's been all over the place. And, again, now if you're Davis Cobb, you want a pitch that maybe you can elevate, but 3-1, don't expand your strike zone too far. It's got to be really good, Davis. Infield comes in for Purdue. Nobody out. Huck at third. The pitch to Cobb. Swing and a miss. And he extends his strike zone mm. on a ball outside as he chases a breaking ball. Iowa today, one for four with runners on third and less than two outs. Davis Kopp uses his timeout here. Good play. You know, you're, you maybe chased a pitch. You're getting sped up a little bit. So 
get down to a spot you're comfortable. Coach Sutherland's going to give you a uh, probably a brief pep talk at this because the home plate umpire looked up and went, hey, where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> he vanished. <laughs> My guy was standing right in front of me, and now he's gone. But I like that. I like the play. That's, the, again, kind of the veteran move of I'm not – you know, I, I did something I shouldn't have done. I'm mad. I mean, I haven't flushed it yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so so make sure you get it flushed. Make a good swing decision here. That last one doesn't affect this one. Three balls, two strikes. Danley comes set, stares down Huxdorf at third. The pitch to Cop. Line drive, base hit into left. Davis Cop gives Iowa the lead. It's four to three as Huxdorf scores. What a job there! As he took a fastball, pulled it in the hole. And now keep piling. You've got, uh, you know, there's still nobody out. Now you got, it's like having the leadoff guy on base again. And if you're Davis Cop, you got to do the same thing that Huck did. You're not necessarily thinking about stealing bases, but you're thinking about, hey, watch that dirt ball. Get a good dirt ball read and see if I can get to second without having to have anybody bunt me over. Cop with three RBIs today. And that RBI right there gives Iowa the 4-3 to three lead in the seventh. Yeah, Meatloaf thinks two out of three is not bad, but three out of four is even better. <laughs> well, take that. Still nobody out. Cop at first base. Big at bat for Reese for his confidence to stay disciplined in there. First pitch, low and in, ball one. Reese is probably thrilled to death to see a guy throwing from that side of the, of the mound instead of a left-hander hooking it over his helmet. Right. Danley taking his time to get back on the rubber. 13 hits for Iowa. The bats have woken up for the Hawks. 1-0 pitch to Moore. Swing and a miss. Good cut. His right. eyes were looking at Folk Field over there and right. And Reese better be careful there. You, you mentioned that he was waiting on Danley to get on the rubber, but Reese also wasn't in the box yet. Take care of your part of the business at the 10-second clock and get in the box. We saw that Andy Nelson got punched out on that because he was waiting. The, uh, the, the pitcher wasn't there, but he didn't take care of his part of the business. Now Moore squares to bunt very early, draws the third baseman in. The pitch to Reese. He pulls it back, and it's low and in, ball two. Yeah, so you see third baseman charging. Reese squares to bunt early, which should probably tell you Reese wants to bunt this toward first base because otherwise he would have pulled it back like Michael did and went ahead and taken a swing at it. Now he squares again. The pitch is way high. Reese got a good look at that as it whipped past his eyes. And Danley is frustrated. You know, he, he's been all over the place, and, and none of it has really been close to the zone. I think you keep the bunt on. Probably. It seems to have disturbed him a yes. little bit. For that reason alone, three balls and a strike. Moore takes downstairs, ball four. Or just let him be disturbed and <laughs> take the walk, <laughs> however you want to do it. So far, the entry of Danley into the game has not paid off for Purdue as it has for them the majority of the season. And with runners at first and second, nobody out. Will Mulfler comes up. Purdue's head coach is on the top step. Yeah, Danley hasn't had an outing that's been bad. Well, I take that back. He gave up four runs against Notre Dame in one inning. That's his only, that's his only appearance that's under three innings so mm. far. And actually the only appearance he's given up a run. So the Hawks have done something relatively unique here. Four to three Iowa in the seventh. Mofler comes up, two on, nobody out. Hill, show bunt. Infield crashes in, first pitch outside. Great job by Mofler to bring it back. And you saw Iowa kind of wanted to see what the defense was. And Time is called. And we... A mound, a mound visit. I don't know if this is a change either. How many mound, how many mound visits can they have? This is... He's actually looking at his shortstop here. There's some sort of discussion taking place. I have no idea. 
talking to the middle infielders. And now Coach Heller, that'll bring him out of the dugout. Oh yeah, he's going to wait to make sure. He's going to find out what the heck's going on. And the home plate umpire will now come over and address Coach. No idea, John. I, I really I'm very don't. clueless. Yeah, I really don't in this case. They, you know, he, he talked to the shortstop. The shortstop was on the bunt coverage. The shortstop went sprinting over to third, so it's not like Davis Cop did anything. You know, and Davis is now kind of chatting up the... You know, we've got new electronics, too, so you almost wonder, is everything functioning? Right. You know, there, there could be a couple of weird things that way, too. Again, Will showing the bunt. 1-0 pitch. He's pulled it back. Was getting ready to swing, but the pitch was low and out, ball two. Because Will wanted to bunt at the first baseman. Gaffney was charged in. It's like, well, fine. I'll. It's not that I'm going to bunt the other way. It's that I'm going to pull it back, and I'm going to smack one at you if I get a chance. First baseman walking in, 2-0, is low, ball three. Danley cannot find it. Yeah, right now I just... And you've seen teams say that they've done this decayed a little bit at times, and right now I just, I would keep, I would show, I would square and show it and see what he's got at this point. Three balls, no strikes, nobody out. There's a strike inside portion of the plate, three and one. Actually, Go back to it. I well, actually like showing it on 3-0 there, just even if you have no intention of bunting, mm -hmm. just to continue to show a visual that he doesn't seem to like. 4-3 to three, Iowa in the seventh. Now Mulfler shows the bunt again, the 3-1. Down the heart of the plate, 3-2. and two. Will pulled it back and took it. Yeah, and that's, the, that's kind of the game you play is, okay, you, you haven't thrown a strike. Now Will needs to get in. Yep, he got in. Right in time. <laughs> Very close. Full count pitch. Here it comes to Mulfler. Popped it up, shallow right. Second baseman moving back. Right fielder sprinting forward. It's the right fielder. Spence who makes the catch for out number one. Mm, did not get the reward looking for on that one. No, and that's a good job from Danley to battle back. You know, for a guy that hadn't, hadn't had any real idea where the strike zone is, he found it three quick times there. Uh, and, and found it in good places, too. You know, it wasn't just, uh, wasn't just middle, middle. Um, even on the even on the three zero pitch, it was it was still down in the zone. Michael Seegers gets a shot now with one out. Runner still at first and second. He's got to throw it. Turns and steps off. So that's his timeout now for this at bat. Mm -hmm. Did not uh, make any move to throw it to second base. There's nobody there. Cop is the base runner at second. Moore at first. Pitch inside to Michael. Ball one. Yeah, Danley certainly hasn't been able to locate anything with spin. He found the fastball in the last three pitches there, but only thing he's been able to find the plate with at all. 1-0 is at the knees. Fastball. Call the strike. And he's really started to locate it well in the last four strikes with it. 23-21, end of the first quarter for the Hawks. All right. Win each quarter, you're going to win the game. 1-1, <laughs> one, Michael popped it up right side. Hopefully this gets out of play. It will. 1 and 2. Boy, that's 93-mile-an-hour fastball right in the center of the plate. Pulling for Michael to get a clutch hit. Choked up on the bat. One ball, two strikes. Danley is ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Again, he hasn't thrown the breaking ball for a strike since he's entered the game. And Michael went chasing a ball that wasn't anywhere near a strike as it was breaking away from him. Mm. Now it's up to Gable Mitchell. Iowa up by one in the seventh, but... Leaving a lot of meat on the bone with a couple runners on base. 
Mitchell goes from the left side. Danley delivers. Mitchell squares to bunt, pulled it back. Ooh, high, tight strike call. That's a tough pitch to bunt. Yeah, I mean, but it's actually a, almost a perfect pitch to try to bunt down the first baseline if he's going to drag it that way with how deep those two guys are on him again. Drifting outside, ball one. Mitchell today is one for three, singled in the fourth, grounded out in the second, popped up in the sixth. The one-one pitch, fouled back. One and two. Yeah, Danley's really shown why he's such a good pitcher. Bounced back here after struggling, kind of throwing it all over the place. Really kind of zoomed back in the zone and made some good pitches to get outs. Hang tough, Gable. Danley's got the sign, the one-two. Swing and a miss. High and out, Gable chased it. That's out number three. Iowa retakes the lead. It's four to three. Time to stretch things out in West Lafayette. Hey, Hawk fans, you know what to do. It's time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, and go enjoy the best seventh inning stretch tradition of all. Blue Bunny ice cream. Blue Bunny is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning stretch. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknall is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknall.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. Bottom of the seventh at Alexander Field in West Lafayette. Iowa out in front of Purdue, four to three. Aaron Savory out to pitch for the Hawks. Couple of changes defensively. Looks like Cade Moss will enter and catch. Andy Nelson moves in from right to first base. And Ben Wilmus enters and will play right for the Hawks. Yeah, we went, uh, well, we were talking about basketball. We went, uh, we went up. We went offense for defense now here at this point, making yep. a change here. We got the lead. Hawks will try to try to squeeze the lead here and nine outs to get still though. Nine one two coming up for Purdue. This is a this is a significant uh, development in the game. Savria able to get the last three batters of the inning to ground out. They'll start with Spence in the seventh. The Hawks are out hitting Purdue 13 to four, but only lead it four to three. Been one of those one of those days. Left 11 men on base. Purdue's left just five. Now we're telling the Purdue dugout the changes. Well, we like to we like to play games. When was the, delayed when was, and when was the last time you saw a, some a, a home plate umpire spend this much time with the opposing coach telling them what the changes were? I don't know if I've ever seen it, let alone that much time. So let's get, not, get in, throw strikes. Let's yeah, let's let's go. <clears throat> All right, Spence is in the box. Savory's ready. First pitch on its way home. Swing and a miss. Good start from Sav. Good to see Cade Moss in the game and catching. Out of the windup, Savory's ready. Here is the 0-1. Way outside. Held on to that pitch way too long. <laughs> Spence actually started moving. He was on he was on full go. He was ready. Yeah, 
Here's a 1-1. Just outside, ball two. Brought it a lot closer to the plate. <laughs> Hawkeye fans chirping a little, but that was outside. We have a bit of a better view than they do. Here comes the 2-1. Fouled off to the Purdue dugout at third, 2-2. Two two. Appreciate the enthusiasm. Yes, need the energy, need the spark. Bottom of the seventh, Iowa up by one. Here comes the 2-2 pitch from Savory. Oh. Cold third strike. How about that beauty from Aaron? The knee buckler. That was dirty. Brought that one in. Just that little slow looping breaking ball. You think, hey, I'm in good shape. And then it just keeps on breaking and keeps on turning. One away here in the seventh. Now life gets interesting. Top of the order. A lot of speed, guys. Tello will have to be on his toes. He doesn't want to walk too far back there at third base. Yeah, he's even with the bag in the dirt. This is Bolton. The Hawks walked him last time. Sav starts with a strike. That, with, with the place of the order coming up now for Purdue, it's just that important to get that nine hitter out. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Low and in. Bolton thought about it, but decided not to swing at it. Outstanding pitch from Sav. Great spot. Here comes a 1-1. Similar spot. Stayed low. Ball two. Bolton makes it hard to work the inside part of the plate, especially for a guy like Sav who's breaking it in there as he's down low in a crouch. And that, that back left knee is probably almost over the edge of the plate. High and out, ball three. Whoa! It wasn't, it wasn't out. I might give you. I might give you that it was a little high, but it was not out. Stay in play. Th three one is hit in the air down the line and left. Peterson's over. Sam caught it in foul territory. The Hawks are gifted a bit there and get Bolton out. Savory gave him a fastball right in the middle of the plate, and I don't think Bolton was expecting it. It was a little bit late on it. And that kind of goes to why I think Brody might have had a, had a little tell yesterday because, boy, Bolton was on time on every fastball Brody threw yesterday, and there he was really late on Sav and just flared it down the line. Gasser comes into the box, takes ball one. That was huge right there. I, I mean, that was... Well, that's a that's a big difference in the inning, you know. Yeah. He, he's going to try to steal second base. Check swing and a foul ball over Cade's right shoulder. Just having even one out and a runner on makes things a lot more difficult. And with the speed out there, the double play threat is well, not particularly one out with that runner on. Right. Good pitch from Sav. He finally found that low inside corner to the lefty, and it's one and two. Yeah, he's been working that corner, just hasn't been able to quite get it dialed in. That time he does. Now he's in control of the at-bat. He just needs to finish. The wind-up in the pitch. In the dirt. Tried to go to the same spot, and it was low. Gasser today is just 0 for 1. He walked and then laid down a sacrifice bun his last time up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Savory ready. The pitch. Low and in. Missed with the fastball. Full count. Yeah, just overthrew that one. Got, the, got his velocity up to 91, but just, uh, just wasn't even a swingable pitch. But let's see if he comes back with the breaking stuff here. 3-2. High, ball four. Mm, mm, mm. That brings Gaffney to the plate, and he's got power. He's took the strangest practice cut I've ever seen as he just kind of half jumped and swung at it. I'm not sure what he was doing. Two outs for Gaffney. Already has a home run today. He's the go-ahead run in the bottom of the seventh. Iowa leading four to three. Savory out of the stretch. The pitch, got a piece of it, knocked it foul. Good fastball there, got it inside, tied him up. You know, 
Gasser's a stolen base threat too. Now, whether he's as likely to run with Gaffney, you know, Gaffney with such extra base power, you know, maybe you don't have to run, but wouldn't surprise me. Fakes going. Here's a ground ball foul down the line at third. That was not foul by much. Wow. Very close. Now Savory in a great spot. No balls, two strikes. He had Gasser let him get away. Now you've tied, you've tied Gaffney up with two fastballs on the inside part of the plate. Start that breaking ball on the edge of the plate and break it off to the batter's box, left-handed batter's box. Runner takes off. Swing and a miss. Didn't matter. Savory with the strikeout and the finger pistol. Yes. And see, it's one thing to, you know, I'm all for showing it toward your dugout. That's how you do it, John. To your dugout. Go celebrate with your team. Old man in the cloud. Here we go. I'm the young man at the, cl <laughs> at the cloud, too. Four to three Hawks. We'll bring you the eighth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. As NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Top of the order for Iowa in the top of the eighth, leading Purdue 4-3. to three. Nelson, Peterson, and Tello. Insurance runs are great right here against Danley. Oh, that, that, that lineup you just said sounds like runs. It does. It does. A couple of runs scored by Nelson and Peterson combined, an RBI for Peterson. So the Hawks are hitting it well, the top half of the order, which is this group coming to the plate right now. Andy is three for three today with a walk and a run scored. Danley, the right-hander, is ready. Out of the windup, he deals to Nelson. Ball one, low and in. You get a long time to think about it before he goes into his windup of he deals, <laughs> still dealing. We're really building the suspense. Shuffling out the rest of the deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting through a whole shoe, basically. Here comes the 1-0. That dropped in there for a strike one and one. That might be the first breaking ball he's landed. Yeah. Now, if Danley were to speed it up out of the windup, it'd really throw the hitters off. And that's what Is Morales it? did yesterday, was yeah. kind of buried his tempo and his delivery. 1-1 one, one to Nelson. High strike, 1-2. and, two. and that, was, that was the cutter there. A little less velocity. You've kind of gone back to that now a little bit more. See what Danley throws Nelson this time. Here comes the 1-2. Ooh, up and in. Out of the zone, ball two. Went straight fastball there, and again, he can get that up there. That was 94. That cutter's been in the upper 80s. Protect that outside corner. He's setting up out there. Here comes a 2-2. Ground ball up the middle. Shortstop knocks it down, juggles it, throw to first base in time to barely get Nelson at first. Yeah, he, uh, I don't think it was that he wasn't in a rush. You know, you get a dirt infield, sometimes you get funny hops, especially they, they come out and they, they roll it over every four or every three innings, but we're kind of a little bit in the middle. See, so Hawkeyes have had some traffic. It gets chewed up a little bit. It gets a little more difficult to 
handle out there. Here's Sam Peterson. Squares to bunt, pulled it back. Fastball right down the middle. Nothing in one. First time he's taken a pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was maybe a little frustrated that he did. Because <laughs> he didn't really want to bunt it. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two now for Peterson. Sam is two for three today with a walk, a run scored, an RBI. Down in the count, though, 0 and 2. Danley looks much better this inning. Yeah, he really settled in after about half of that inning last time. 0 2 dropped right in there for the called third strike. Two down. Yeah, I mean, that's a little. A little bit of a strike zone expansion, but boy, not much. And based on based on what we've seen called, I suppose it's probably quite a bit. But a pitch with two strikes in the eighth inning, you're probably not taking. Mm -hmm. Two quick outs for Iowa in the eighth. Here's Raider Tello takes outside for ball one. Four to three Hawks in the eighth. Middle third of the order come to the plate for the Boilers in the bottom half of the inning. Tello takes down Main Street, one and one. Little run for the Hawkeye women, up 38 to 24. Doing that with Caitlin Clark being 0 for 3 from three-point range, while the rest of the team is 6 for 8. That's how, it's, that's how that tournament might have to be for the, for the Iowa women. 1-1. Ground ball up the middle. What a snag by Danley. Behind the back. No look stop. He flipped his glove up and then tossed it over to first base. And the Hawks go down 1-2-3 in the eighth. 4-3 to three, Iowa. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa leading Purdue 4-3 to three in the bottom of the eighth. Aaron Savory out for another inning of work. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Connor Kaskinet to lead things off for Purdue. Savory out for the bottom of the eighth. Kaskinet has grounded out a few times today. He's 0 for 3. Right-handed hitter is in the box. Savory ready to deal. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. We'll wrap up the series with Purdue tomorrow. First pitch at noon central time. 1-0 is in there for a strike, 1-1. One and one. The Hawks will be at Illinois State on Tuesday. Midweek contest. In the car again. There we go. Normal Illinois. 1-1 one, one from Savory dropped in there for a strike, 1-2. and two. And then home back-to-back -back weekends. That'll be nice. Easter weekend and the weekend to follow. Minnesota and Michigan. One ball, two strikes. The pitch from Savory. Downstairs. Count even at two. 
Sabs just needs to trust himself a little bit. He gets ahead, and then the, that that pitch you can just see is just trying to put a little extra oomph into it instead of just locating it. 2-2 two -two is flared out into center. Huxdorf sprinting forward. Kyle's got it with ease. One down. Good pitch there. Again, breaking ball, swept it all the way across the plate. Probably wasn't a strike, but because you had Cascanet in a spot, he goes ahead and chases it and hits a soft flare out there. That'll bring up Sutter. He's one for three this afternoon. Base is empty and one out. Swings at the first pitch, lines it to Seegers. Oh, it took a dive and got into left center field. It totally fooled Michael. And Sutter is on. I haven't seen Michael puzzled like that before. No, and I, based on how quickly Iowa just threw that ball out of play, must have just kind of weird end capped it. It was only 73 coming off the bat, and I think that's what fooled Michael was. I think he thought it was a sharp line drive. I did too when he hit it, but the ball wasn't, and then he just kind of froze him in place, wasn't able to move his feet. And so now I will have some work to do here. Mm. So a single for Sutter and the pinch runner Malott comes in for him. He's at first base. He's taken off. The pitch is inside. Moss dropped it. And the runner will get to second base. Well, and because of how Sav pitches, you know, you know you're going to get a, even if Sav is quick to the plate, you know there's a high likelihood you're going to get a 75-mile-an-hour breaking ball. Mm -hmm. Tying run at second base for Purdue. One ball, no strikes. Savary's pitch. High, inside of it two, ball two. Now just settle in. Don't let that part bother you. You're still just two good outs away. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch from Savory. Mm, check swing. Did he go? No, ball three. Walk isn't the worst thing. It puts the go-ahead run on base, but... Sets up the double play. Yep. Three balls, no strikes. Runner at second base, one out. Pitch is outside. Ball four. That might do it for Sav. Coach Heller sneaking his way up, and you are correct, sir. Iowa going to the bullpen in the bottom of the eighth inning. Four to three. The Hawks with the lead, but runners at first and second for Purdue and one out. Bullpen door is opened up. We'll introduce the next Hawkeye pitcher right after this pitching change break. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Pitching change for Iowa in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Hawks out in front, four to three. Senior right-hander from LeClaire, Iowa. Jack Young is into the game. Two and zero oh on the season with a 1.29 ERA. Seven innings pitched, four hits, two runs. Just one of those were earned. Three walks, nine strikeouts. Opponents getting Jack at a 167 batting average. He'll face uh, Joe Stevens, who is one for two today. Stevens is a 328 hitter. 
He's got some extra base pop in the bat. Three doubles and two home runs. And Jack Young. Yeah, he grounded out twice yesterday. Grounded out twice or once today. Jack Young is a ground ball pitcher. I'm just saying. Yes. It's an opportunity. Yep. To make this far less painful than it feels right now. <laughs> They're playing the ring of fire for Jack. We've called him the firefighter before. The house is burning a bit. But it's manageable for Jack and the Hawks. One run lead for the black and gold. One out for Purdue. Runners at first and second. Young is ready. Let's look at the Iowa defense. Middle infield pinching second base. Raider guarding the line at third. Huck is shallow in center, but straight up. Young is ready for the first pitch to Stevens. It's on its way home. Runner takes off, got hit by the pitch. Bases are loaded. Mm. That one just popped right out of his hand wrong. Not even, not even close. And Hawks in a world of trouble here now with the left-hander up. Corners come in a bit for the Hawks. Middle infield stays back. Four to three Iowa in the, t in the bottom of the eighth. Bases loaded, one out for Gill. First pitch from Young, strike one. Hard fastball outside corner. Yeah, Gill tripled into that left center field gap, but also grounded out to second. Could probably use that one right now. Oh, one pitch inside, almost hit him. Ball one. Yeah, as he crowds up on the plate with Jack's big sweeper, that does take a little bit of that away. 48-30, Hawkeye women at halftime. All right. Young comes set with the 1-1. Popped up down the left field line. Petey running, running, running. Sam sprinting. He dives. He dropped it, but it's foul. Great effort by Sam. I hope he's all right. Yeah, he pops up and gets the ball in. I was worried about the wrist because his glove came off. 100%. That that, yeah, the, the, way, the way his wrist flipped over, I think it might have been his, uh, his hand warmer that actually popped off, but... Uh, but, yeah, it looked like his wrist kind of twisted over. Probably, a, I mean, I guess you still have to get this guy out, but might have been a break that he didn't catch it. Yeah, that runner would have tagged and scored, considering that Peterson had to dive. One ball, two strikes. Young comes set. Here's the pitch. Lined foul over to the left. We'll do it again. One, two, line drive, left side, foul. Spinner off the bat. <laughs> I'm, sure the, I'm sure the listeners can tell, too. You can feel the nervousness in your voice when... Uh, well, that was going to be a problem. But it was foul by... It was foul. The last off one. Off the bat, though, it looks like it... And you never can tell if it's <laughs> got the sinker action to it or not. Yeah, we've had a couple weird ones happen, haven't we? One, two, line drive, foul to the right. <laughs> Spraying it all over the place. Go get him, Jack. I mean, a guy with just 10 strikeouts, so uh, you know, he does a good job putting bat to ball. 10 strikeouts, eight walks coming into this game. Walked earlier, so it's 10 and 9. Pretty mm -hmm. obviously even distribution. Another 1-2 pitch. Cold third strike. Jack Young got him. Two down. And now, to be fair to home plate umpire, boy, that is a pitch he has not called a strike much all game long. 
bottom of the zone, just barely clipping the clipping the edge of it. I think we're gonna have a pinch hitter here for Spence. This is Aaron Dalney. He's a left-handed hitter. Iowa holding on to a one-run lead in the bottom of the eighth. Two down, bases stay loaded. Dalney, 269. Eight strikeouts, though, and 26 at-bats. Start back over. Good speed and corn bloom at second, so outfield will have to be ready to throw. First pitch from Young, grounded to the right side and foul. Hit a rock, kick fair. <laughs> <laughs> Young taking his time to get back to the rubber. Couple of deep breaths for Jack. No balls and a strike. Bases loaded, two outs for Purdue. Iowa leads four to three. Oh one one from Young. Foul ball over to the left, nothing in two. What do you like, John? You like a chase pitch or you like to go right at him? Uh, I like a chase pitch here. Low, keep, low and out? Keep it down, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. See if you can get him to see if you can get him to chase. Make sure your miss is down. Trust Cade Moss to block it. Here comes the 0-2 from Jack. Lined into right. Wilmus on the run. Ben got it. Great catch by Benny the Jet out there in right. And Purdue leaves him loaded. Jack Young again gets out of the jam. He's the fireman. <laughs> Four to three, Hawks maintain the lead. We'll go to the ninth right after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game as a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season. Please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community serving the Iowa City community for 57 years. Oak Knoll is conveniently located near the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. Another great job by you, John, getting through the reads. I, uh, you know, I, I know I'm going to have the bottom of the ninth, but I like to be done. I can relax a little bit. Yes, all attention on the game. Exactly. Watch Kyle Huxdorf extend the Hawkeye lead. Need it. Need it, John. Need some insurance. Iowa up 4-3 to three as we get to the top of the ninth. We'll see Danley again, and it'll be Huxdorf, Cop, and Moore. Do up. Uh, it won't be Moore. It'll be, it'll be Cade Moss. Moss will be... In for Reese when the time comes. We'll see if Iowa even pinch hits there. I suppose they won't. They'll keep Cade in the game for the bottom of the ninth. First pitch to Huck. Inside. Almost hit him. Ball one. Yeah, you've got a Davis Cop in the game. So yeah, can't, can't make that change. <laughs> you have to give up your DH for that. So. I was about halfway through the statement, John. I thought <laughs> this wouldn't make any sense. Danley ready. Out of the windup. Deals to Huckstorf. Whoa. Called a strike. Way inside part of the plate. One and one. You're just angry guy now. I guess it's with Kyle crowding the plate. I don't have the cheat computer that you have over there, John. <laughs> I call it as I see it. You've got young eyes, though. Looked inside to me. Here comes a 1-1. Kyle hits it foul over to the left. Yeah, Danley's done a much better job locating multiple pitches now. He's been able to get the, the cutter in there. You know, After really only being able to throw strikes with the fastball early in his appearance, he's... Yeah. 
bounced back nicely. It's like a totally different pitcher, a totally different guy. Well, I think this is the one they expect to see more yeah. often than not. He's, he's outstanding. 1-2 to Huck. Off the end of the bat, hit into right, but the right fielder playing shallow enough, he's able to get there in time for out number one. Yeah, that sounded funny off the bat, didn't it? 73 mile an hour off the bat. <laughs> so That hurt, probably. Fastball. <laughs> fastball down and in there. Here comes Cop, Davis Cop, with three singles today. Continues to raise his batting average. I think when we were at Georgia, maybe Jacksonville State, he was in the low 200s. Yeah, it was 220-ish. Yep. Up to 324 now. First pitch, outside, ball one. More of the guy the Hawkeye coaching staff expected. Maybe maybe with the with the lower body injury, he hasn't been able to, to exhibit the power they expected. Danley's 1-0 delivery is high. Above the letters, ball two to cop. Purdue has the top of the order coming up in the ninth. Never said it's going to be easy. Right. So any runs that the Hawks can get, that would be valuable. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch to Davis. Low, ball three. And we all of a sudden having a difficult time finding the, uh, the area code around the plate. Has not been near the zone on the three that have been called a ball. Ooh, strike one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Outside part of the zone. I'm not even going to look at the computer, John. Three and one. Help me out. It was out. Okay. <laughs> it was well out. Sometimes I see things, and, and, you, and you've got the hard truth over there, and I might be a little bit off, but looked out from here. That one's definitely down. Davis is going to make sure. <laughs> and then he tosses the bat and walks. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> we'll get a pinch runner for Cobb. Ben Swales, the birthday boy, is in. Ben. He will pinch run for Davis. Well, you know the last time I corrected you when you missed the uh, – when, when it was not as bad as you made it sound, but that one was every bit as bad as you made that one sound. But, but back to birthday boy Ben. Yes. Pinch runner extraordinaire Ben Swales. Smart and speedy Ben Swales. All right, we'll see Cade Moss. I don't know if – maybe if you see Cade go ahead and bunt here. You know, the, the injury's been healing up. He's you know, Obviously, he's able to catch. The hitting has still been the part that's lagged a little bit, as you might imagine. See the outfield playing him maybe a few steps in. But he's never been an overwhelmingly powerful hitter. Takes strike one. Yeah, he's a position hitter. Mm -hmm. He's a... You know, Joke about Cade's corner, you know, hooking one over the third baseman's head down the line. He's not flying it over anybody's head. He's positioning it well, lacing one into a gap maybe, especially if they roll in too far. Boy, if he hits it into Cade's corner right now, that'd score a run. Oh, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. He's going to have a hard time hitting that ball into Cade's corner yeah. as it breaks away from him. No balls, two strikes, one out. Top of the ninth, Iowa leading four to three. Swales at first base. The pitch, Cade takes for a strike. Called third strike, that's two outs. All kind of dotted up the outside part of the plate. Did ben Wilmus his first at bat of the game. Haven't seen Ben in a few games. It's nice for... Uh, for Ben to have a crack at it. Been in a bit of a funk. Now would be a good time to pop out of a funk. Two outs. Throw over to first base. Swales is back. Dan only throws it at least 92 over to first base. And it's a quick move, so it throws us off from the delivery standpoint that is so slow. Yeah, from everything else that's a little slow motion, the move to first is 
anything but that. Wilma squares to bunt and popped it foul in front of the Purdue dugout. I like the basic concept. Yeah, third baseman's playing <clears throat> way beyond the bag at third. And third baseman thinks that's just to show that he's not going to do it again because no, uh, didn't move him in at all. Again, they're... This is kind of old school baseball. You protect the line, the extra base hit, so that Swales can't score from first. 0 1. Ben takes in ball one. So you just try to make sure you protect the protect the area, try to funnel it into the middle of the field so that you can make sure that Swales can only take two bases on a on a double instead of scoring with three. Quick move over to first, safe. Safe at first. They're out of challenges. They want to, but they can't. Used them all up. Whew, that was close. That was probably the closest one of the day. <laughs> and that was the uh, when the first baseman asked, hey, why did you challenge this? And we were joking about it being because they were trying to warm up the pitcher. That's, that's why you don't waste one. One ball, one strike to Wilmus. Here's the pitch. Line drive up the middle. Base hit for Ben. Great to see for Wilmus. And that's a good fastball, too. That ball was in, and Ben was able to just get squared up, get a barrel on it, send it up the middle. And, boy, we talk about this all the time with, you know, we early in the season talked about having that, uh, you know, the four-foot putt after you just missed a four-foot putt. Well, Michael Seegers comes up 182 with runners in scoring position. He's got a chance to add to the Hawkeye lead. Come on, Michael. One for three today. Takes up and in for ball one. Swales at second base. There's two outs. So he'll be going on contact. Should score anywhere. The right fielder has a decent arm. Left and center haven't shown as much. 1-0 is just foul over down the third base line. That hooked late. I thought it had a chance off the bat, but too far out in front. Foul ball, one and one. I didn't really get it with the barrel as it just kind of came off just 76 mile an hour kind of floating out there. For Michael's confidence, a base hit would go a long way. Here's a 1-1. Low and in, ball two. Four to three, Iowa in the ninth, seeking insurance. They've pretty much... They, they hold Swales on early, but then they've pretty much left the spot. So he can, get, he can get a good lead, and he can get an especially good secondary lead here. So you know, a ball that bounces, you've got a chance to get to third. Pitch to Michael. Popped it up. Mm. Shallow right center. The second baseman will go back. He'll make the play for the third out. A couple runners left on for Iowa. That makes it 13 that the Hawks have left on base today. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite the black and gold. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth right after this. Iowa leads it 4-3. to three. Back in just a moment, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, You'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. Whether you're building a backyard fence for your family's new best friend or firing up the excavator for your next commercial project, a free and simple call can save you from expensive fines and even save your life. Call 811 at least two days before you start your next project to have underground utility lines located and marked. At MidAmerican Energy, your safety is our number one priority. So make it your priority to call 811 before you dig. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Alexander Field in West Lafayette, Indiana. Game two of the series with... Purdue, Iowa leading 4-3 to three as we go to the bottom of the ninth. 
top of the order coming to the plate for the Boilers. It'll be Bolton Jr., Gasser, and Gaffney. New pitcher into the game for the Hawkeyes. The left-hander, redshirt senior from Clive, Ben Dete. Five appearances on the year for Ben. 6.75 ERA, four innings, four hits, three runs have all been earned. Just one walk, nine strikeouts. Opponents hitting 267 on Mr. Dete. Lefty on lefty, John. That's the situational situ- uh, uh, deal here. Well, that's, yeah, you're, go- you're going to... Hucks don't really have a traditional closer, so they go to... They go to Dete in this case to try to get the lefty-lefty matchup here on the first couple hitters. First pitch, low and out. I mean, you know how this works. We've seen it. You've got to throw these guys strikes. They will not swing and expand the zone early, especially in this situation. You know, down a run, need to add. So they're they're going to try to... Try to create havoc and get a base runner. 1-0 pitch is in the dirt. Ball two. Fire a strike here, Ben. There it is. Strike one. Inside corner, two and one. That's a good comeback fastball there. Iowa up by one in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Low ball three. Bolton helped Iowa out in the seventh on a 3-1 pitch. I'm not sure I'd hold my breath for that right now. Hits it in the air deep to center. Huxdorf's got a long run. Kyle still running, and he made a basket catch over his head. Huck! Kyle the Kid, yes! Say hello oh. to say hello to Willie Mays. Kyle was, <laughs> Kyle was playing short, playing shallow in center field. Bolton hits it 101 off the bat, drills it into center. And again, the wind playing a little tricks with it, holds it up. <laughs> and Kyle, I think Kyle actually had it measured because then he just went and made the catch over his shoulder. One out and strike one from Dete to Gasser. <laughs> what a play by Huxdorf in center. That was sick. A one. Swinging bunt to Tello at third. Raiders got it. He'll step. He'll throw. Two down. Boy, that's we talked about. We talked about at one of the breaks that you know, the Iowa defense hadn't made kind of those game saving, game changing, whatever you want to say plays. Boy, that was from Huck, and that's a pretty darn good play from Tello, too, on a ball that you know could easily catch you off balance a little bit. And I'm going to hope that Huck takes a step or two back now as, uh, <coughs> as Gaffney steps in here. Yeah, Gaffney's got a ton of power. He's meeting with his coach down the third baseline to discuss strategy. Two outs, bases empty. Iowa up four to three. Bendite on the rubber and ready to roll. The Hawkeyes trying to even the series, forcing the rubber match tomorrow. Out of the windup, the pitch from Dete. Low, ball one. The track man here is terrible at cutting in and out. <laughs> 1 0 pitch. Fouled over to the right. 1 and 1. One one is at the knees. Called a strike. One and two. Beautiful spot by Dete. Another backdoor breaking ball there. Just dotted the outside part of the plate right at the knees. See if Ben can finish him off. The one two. Grounder left side and foul. We'll do it again at one and two. Bases empty, two outs. Purdue down to their last strike. Dete ready. Here's the pitch. Low. Bit inside. Ball two. Good spot from the lefty coming all the way across like that just to see if Gaffney will go after it. Now the count's even at two. Here's the pitch from Dete. Lined into left. Peterson moving back. Sam's got it for the third out. Game over. Hawks win. 
four to three. Ben Dete, save number one on the year. Give Savory the win there. The Hawks get back on track, 12 and 10 on the season now. Purdue drops to 16 and 8, and Iowa forces the rubber match tomorrow. The winner take all for the series against the Boilers. Boy, what an outstanding effort. You know, we, we talked a lot about you would know you would know what the Iowa season was going to look like based on the response today. It wasn't pretty, but it was gritty. And it was it was a it was a grinded out the offensive performance, 14 hits. Yeah, you left a lot of guys on base. You you you, you left some meat on the bone, as you'd say. But um, pitching staff was phenomenal. Kate Obermuller, five innings, four hits, three runs, four walks. So you know you still you still want to see Cade clean that up a little bit more. But boy, Aaron Savory came in, two and a third innings, a hit, two walks. Jack Young comes in and decides, hey, you know what? Two guys on isn't quite enough of a challenge. I'm going to go ahead and hit a guy, load up the bases, and then I'll get you out of it. And then Ben Dete comes in, faces one, two, three in the Purdue order, and sets them down one, two, three. Excellent job by the Hawkeyes today to even things up in this series. The Hawks have not had a win like that this season. No. Where, where the bullpen has done their job, the, the offense got the clutch hit, and, and held a lead. They haven't had a win like that this year. Oh, Iowa hasn't had a game where you thought, yeah, we, we can win a game four to three. Um, and, and so, you know, for that to happen now um, in, in, a, in a spot like this is a huge deal. It should hopefully be a huge lift for, for the dugout of the hitters and then for the bullpen of the pitchers to say, yeah, we can, we can do this. We can do this. The Hawks can do this. Four to three, winner over Purdue today. We'll take a break. And continue with post-game coverage right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa wins game two of the series over Purdue, four to three. In a great effort by the pitching staff. Timely hits by a couple of Hawkeyes. How about Davis Kopp today? Three for four, three RBIs and a walk. He's turned into Iowa's MVP. Actually, what I'm most amazed about, Aaron Savory got the win and the save. I don't quite know how that. That can't be. That, That's official, an that official statistical <laughs> anomaly. Happened. But yeah, Davis Kopp, great job. Uh, you know, and again, three of the four RBIs. Um, walked in another plate appearance, so so four out of five plate appearances got on base. Just an outstanding all-around move by by Davis on the offensive end. Uh, Andy Nelson, three hits for the Hawks. Sam Peterson, two hits. Uh, the bottom of the order did a nice job getting on base uh, for Iowa today. Uh, the pitching stats, we, we've kind of highlighted them a bit. Uh, five innings for Cade Obermuller, giving up four hits and three earned. Uh, did a nice job and in the bullpen. Nails for the Hawks today. Absolutely great. I'm going to give you to Coach Sutherland here right as he walks up. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland joining us in the broadcast booth. Coach, uh, congratulations on the win. We, we haven't had a win like that yet this season. Yeah, we were talking about that, you know, just before I came up here. We kind of needed one of those, right? We needed to win a game that was really tight. We needed to clutch up in the bullpen um, when the game was every out mattered, right? And everyone's kind of tense. Tense moments with every out. We needed we needed to succeed there, um, which we did today, which was which was a huge deal. Not not only today, but moving forward. It, it sort of proves that this team can do it. That this team can win this way, right, Coach? No doubt. And and 
you know, it's, it's not an, e- not an easy day to play, right? Wind's blowing it straight in, and, um, you know, you, you know the offense is going to be limited, so your thoughts – your thoughts are, okay, free bases, right? Um, making them earn everything, and, you know, it's likely going to be a low-scoring game. So it kind of played out that way. Certainly, you know, you look offensively, and we left a lot of things out on the field. We didn't do a great job with runners on third and less than two outs, something we've been doing a really good job with. I think we were one for four, and that really hurt us. You know, that game, you know, that probably should have been a 7-8 run game. You know, at least as many, that's how much we should have scored, you know, according to how many hits we had and all that. But, you know, you survived it and, and some clutch hits in there. I thought Cade really battled, did a nice job, got us through five and a little bit into the sixth. And then the bullpen between salves, uh, Jack Young. Jack Young comes in <laughs> an unbelievably difficult spot, you know, gets out of it. He's been doing that, you know, this year. And then Ben, you know, first time out there in kind of a safe situation, you know, we start off and obviously Huck's play is is as big time of a play you can as you can ever have but Ben gets through a clean ninth and um, like I said it's just good to win one of those that way we, John and I were up here thinking when uh, Bolton hit that to center we thought you got to be kidding me this guy again but Huck tracked it down and and for everything that went wrong yesterday totally flipped it today everything went right for the Hawks you guys made it happen today yeah a lot lot better obviously the approach you know yesterday we just really didn't hold the zone you know you got to credit Morales and and he does a lot of kind of tempo changing things um, that were frustrating to our guys we didn't do a great job of adjusting to it and um, today against a guy that's pitched the best out of everybody on their staff we really had we made him work you know he's out of there in the fifth inning and got into the pen and they had to go to a guy that you know has been really good for him and we found a way to scratch one across there um, you know and you think about how that inning went Huck leads off with the I think maybe a walk we get a ball in the dirt right we get a pass ball we and then Davis comes through with the runner at third there um, is, is just kind of how you want to manufacture runs in, in late in games. So a um, lot, a lot better, you know, given the frustration of yesterday and, and spe- specifically offensively when I thought, you know, was probably our poorest output, you know, from a, from a, you know, just sticking to the game plan and conviction in the game plan uh, day. Um, guys answered, answered the bell today. And, you know, like I said yesterday, as frustrating as all of this has been, you know, to a degree, we got great kids. They work. Um, they love to play. All of those things are in place. We just got to get everything kind of synced up here. And, and today was a day that we were closer to doing that. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Let's take the series tomorrow. Thanks, John. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our postgame show from Alexander Field. Iowa wins it 4-3. to three. We're back with highlights right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Iowa takes down Purdue today, 4-3. to three. Let's relive some of the highlights from this great Hawkeye winner. 1-2 to Petey. Hit in the air, deep to right. Carrying well. Get going, baby. It is off the top of the wall. Nelson gets to third. Peterson hits a double. That one was close to getting out of here. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Bases loaded. The pitch to Cop. Ground ball right side through into right center field. Here comes Nelson waving Petey. He'll score with ease. Two nothing Hawks. Davis Cop. Yes. Runners at the corners and two outs. Iowa trying to break the tie. Petey hits it on the ground left side. Past the diving third baseman. Stevens couldn't come up with it. Mulfler scores and Nelson gets to third. Sam Peterson pumps up the dugout as well, and the Hawks have the lead three to two. Looking for that first out of the inning. Here comes the full count pitch. Called third strike at the knees. Obermuller got him. Obermuller deals. Ground ball right back to Katie. Knocks it down with his bare hand. Underhand toss to first base. Got him at first. Good job by Obermuller. 
based on the angle to second base. We'll have a look at it here. Seegers, he's got it. He'll throw to second for one on to first. Double play. You called it, John. Danley comes set, stares down Huxdorf at third. The pitch to Cop. Line drive, base hit into left. Davis Cop gives Iowa the lead. It's four to three as Huxdorf scores. Bottom of the seventh, Iowa up by one. Here comes the 2 2 pitch from Savory. Oh. Called third strike. How about that beauty from Aaron? The knee buckler. <laughs> Runner takes off. Swing and a miss. Didn't matter. Savory with the strikeout and the finger pistol. Yes. Another 1 2 pitch. Called third strike. Jack Young got him. Two down. Here comes the 0-2 from Jack. Lined into right. Wilmis on the run. Ben got it. Great catch by Benny the Jet out there in right. And Purdue leaves him loaded. Jack Young again gets out of the jam. Hits it in the air deep to center. Huxdorf's got a long run. Kyle still running, and he made a basket catch over his head. Huck, Kyle the kid, yes. Say. Here's the pitch from Detay. Lined into left. Peterson moving back. Sam's got it for the third out. Game over. Hawks win. Four to three. Thrilling victory today for Iowa. Four to three over Purdue. Aaron Savory gets the win. Jackson Danley gets the loss. The save goes to Ben Detay. Iowa will look to win the series tomorrow over Purdue. Noon first pitch. First pitch is at noon. Pre-game coverage starts at 11.30 on the Hawkeye Radio Network. We'll be pleased to bring you that coverage tomorrow morning. All right, thanks for listening to Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. For my great board op down the line, Austin, great job today, Austin. Thank you very much. My color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Alexander Field, where Iowa wins it 4-3. to three. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye, but some are a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Hy-V. Score big savings with the new Hy-V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.